Yeah, that's my little brother there. Rapping? I said that's my little brother. Oh, the song? Mm-hmm. Okay. My music, but his, his, his rap. Yeah. Did you see the followers over? Yeah, I posted it. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me make sure. They better be on here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't even look at my Instagram. Yeah. I'll be looking for I thought you didn't want to be on camera. I don't. Who, me? Yeah. I know. It's a crazy thing. Man. Yeah. And I'm also, they'll be trying to record me after the show. It's on the live, and I want to do it. Yeah. You know. Like, that's so weird. I said, yeah. This is dumb. Sometimes, you know, it's bigger than what you know, it's bigger than what we are. So, my thing is, uh, I can get the content out of the people. I'm going to cut your volume down. Somebody, somebody's volume is up right here. Probably mine. So, what's going to happen is once people do comments, they'll be down in that black area. Okay. You'll be able to see them. Yeah. Who got the freestyle? Uh, kick it, Jay. <laughs> Get it, Jay. <laughs> I mean, a couple of drinks to freestyle. Oh, come on now. All right. <laughs> yeah. You must try to be in the gym. Swear <laughs> tomorrow. Huh? Well, you're probably not going to the gym tomorrow, right? No, I'm gonna go Monday. Monday, okay. Okay. Monday. We went hard this week. So. Oh, did you? Yeah. You post anything? Nah. 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 Okay. Did you? Would you? Would you go hard? Huh? Uh, everything. I've been doing full body workout. Over? Oh, yeah. oh man, listen. Yeah. I'm gonna leave that to y'all guys, man. Y'all can handle that. Y'all get sexy for my day. I can't do it. That lower body a lot. Not my sit down game be strong though. Oh, oh, shit. I gotta work out. Mm. Deal with deal with business. Right. True. True. Right. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's starting to build. I think a lot of people know I usually be late anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I should start at 1911, but uh, I keep it at a 1900. What's 1911? That's the, Come on now. You know that, that, that's that year right there, but you know, I keep it to myself. Keep it low. You know? Yeah, wrong. Don't send your people on over here. Tell them to come to the five cash, wrong. You know what I'm saying? Don't send them over. Bring them on in because we're gonna be talking about that thing today. Yeah. All right, all right. As the room is starting to build, a um, I want to welcome everybody to a special episode. This is episode five for five cast. You know what I'm saying? You know that that's a special thing, a very special thing. And so with that special thing, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to make sure, you know, so I got somebody here. Um, it's very special. And when I say that is this young man, I'll tell you, um, coming from uh, the NFL to starting businesses, helping the community, being a staple in this community, um, board of directors of the Exodus Foundation, a model TV star, you know, and I mean, you're probably going to see him in Hollywood here in a little while, you know what I'm saying, the way I'm thinking about it. Um, um, I just want to give that little brief introduction and I'd like to welcome my special guest, Mr. Jerron Haynes. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did it funky. I did it funky. Hey. Yeah, no, man. Jerron Ham, he's in the building today. He's doing it big. Yes. Hey, I'd like to say welcome, man. Appreciate you. I appreciate appreciate you. you. I really appreciate you coming down. Yeah, man, I remember when you were telling me about getting all this together and to see it all come together and, and just what you did. It's amazing. So I'm glad to be here and glad to be 
on episode five. That's crazy, man. Introduce your homeboy you brought with you today. Yeah, man, it's my best friend. We went to high school, been knowing each other for a long time from Leesville, Louisiana. Okay. Best buddy here, Rome. Big Rome, yeah. big Rome. Big Rome. How you doing, man? Doing good? Hey, man, you know what? I, I appreciate you coming down. You know what I'm saying? Coming on over. You've been down here with us and everything. So, how was your trip coming down? School was the weather was the weather kind of bad. I know you drove one of your trucks down. Right, right. It was raining, but yeah. So I'm here to pick up the trailer tomorrow okay. morning. So okay, grab a flatbed. So I drove one of the freight liners down. Okay, it was cool. We got a governor on it though, so I only could go 65. Hey, well, you know it's funny when the, when the boss was driving the governor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then I was like, okay, because <laughs> it went from 310 right. to 350. Mm. Uh, maybe they won't like this. Hey, okay, okay, cool. Okay, so hey. Like I said, this is a special show today, man. And um, one, um, I want I want you to let the people know a little bit about yourself. Yeah, okay. you know what I'm saying. Of course, I'm gonna add a little, a little bit and bring a little flavor to it, wow. with, along with the flavor that you bring to it. And um, mm-hmm. you know, just tell the people a little bit about yourself, your man. All right. So, some of you a lot of people don't know about me. I was born in Germany. What? Military background. So, yeah, like Boris Kojo. Yeah, yeah. Sulzbach, <laughs> Rosenberg, Germany. Um. Uh-huh. Grew up in Leesville, Louisiana, real small place. Okay. Like we had a Walmart and the closest mall was Alexandria, about 40 minutes away. So, right. Uh, coming being in Houston and me living in Dallas, this is like the big city life. Come on now. Uh, but, you know, so I was in the NFL, which you mentioned in uh-huh. the NFL. Funny thing, football wasn't even something I was interested in. I played because my friend. That was something that you weren't interested in, but you, you went to the league. So, I was playing the piano. My parents were pastors. Okay. Okay. I was playing the piano. Um, oh, my boy. boy. <laughs> my boys. My boys was playing football and basketball. I always played basketball, but right. I went out to football with them, mm-hmm. and uh, I really wasn't very good. But I, I was on the team. Everybody could be on the team. Okay. So I was out there, you know, clapping for my boys playing. But right. as we got older, really my junior year of high school. Uh-huh. Uh, I began to grow. I was, went from like 5'11 to 6'3. Um, hit a couple camps, caught the ball well at camps. Okay. My, my stats still weren't all that in high school. Right. But uh, at the camps, the ULM liked me. It's a University of Louisiana Monroe. Gave me a scholarship. I went there. And this is a small school, so I'm not even thinking about the NFL still. So, so, so the league is not even a thought. No, I didn't think people – I thought you had to go to LSU, Bama, uh, Georgia. Okay. Okay. I thought you had to go there. But we ended up having a year where uh, we beat Arkansas. They was ranked top okay. ten. Okay, back. Yeah. Okay. Beat them. Then the next week we uh, went into overtime with Auburn. Then the about two weeks later lost to Baylor by five. Mm-hmm. So now ULM went from nobody to who is right. this? Who is this team? Um, so like four of us went to the league from there. Got opportunities. Okay. Uh, two of us, me and my old roommate. Uh, we're in about four or five years. Okay. And so that's how I got in the league. Had a good good season, junior right. year, was injured se- senior year. Uh-huh. Still made still made the league. Yeah. So now let me let me um for you you keep rolling on me like that. Yeah. Uh, so I the thing I want to highlight is exposure. Mm-hmm. Right. So you said Arkansas, yeah. you said Auburn, right? Yeah. So you you played these guys who were nationally televised schools, right? right? And to them, y'all were easy wins, right? Oh, yeah. To we, them, they're like, we know we're going to kill them. Well, we play them to go get a check to uh, fund the other program. So, our basketball team, soccer team, right? we shared all the money. So, we'll get 300, 400,000 for okay. these big teams. Okay. So, we left with the win and the check at this time. Ooh. So, so but the importance of exposure sometimes. Right, right. And those opportunities. So, even then, because you were playing for the school, did you look at it like, yo, we playing these jokers, but I probably can show out because mm-hmm. I know some scouts out here. Oh yeah, did y'all look at it from that standpoint? Yeah, that team did, and that's why we were good. Our, uh, our, when we were younger, the older guys weren't really like that. Okay. It was like we about to go play Arkansas, right. lose, and get this check. And that was the mentality. Mm-hmm. But we had guys who like let's go win. Why right. not win and get a check? Right. Uh, and so we had we had a lot of talent. So we went in there just like you, another man like me. Okay. You know what I mean? And uh. It turned out we went in uh, overtime, I think, and mm-hmm. won by three points. It was a big parade right. when we got back. It was a right. big deal. So it was it was fun. Then the following week they go into overtime with another big school. Uh-huh. Uh, we had a lot of a lot of scouts from the practice. Oh, okay, that. that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. So so now and I, and the reason why this is important because it's going to lead you to the business side of things right here mm-hmm. because 
you were going to a school that probably wasn't really nationally recognized for people to go to the league too much, right? Right. No, so no, really, no. The, the thought process of somebody that's in college, you know, what I'm saying that goes to one of these schools is probably not really focused on going to the league, but you know, I'm going out here into the employment sector, yeah. right? Yeah. So, what was your mindset? You know, what I'm saying before even thinking about the league, like, did you think about even in junior year, like, just you know, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go um, get my degree in this, and I'm gonna go work at these places and let me get resume on seniors. So let me make sure some of the upperclassmen that left, if I can have connection with them, you'll say if I can work somewhere. Was well, that the mindset? No, I, I, I wasn't focused on the NFL, but I wasn't focused on school either. Mm. But when I started seeing them scouts, I really wasn't focused on school. Uh, so I changed my major to something easy. Okay. It was like, all right, I'm going to the league. Once I seen the scouts, I was like, well, right. they see me now. Okay. Coach will come in at him. The Chargers here for you today. What? that? Why do I need to study for it? Yeah, it's not the right way to think him, but hey, the charges, right, the charges right. here for me. Right. Uh, which then when I got to the league uh -huh. and it didn't go how I thought, I was like, oh, I should have got my degree uh, okay. at that time. I okay. did end up getting it, but right. I was like, oh, okay, okay, but that's so okay, we're gonna go ahead and move forward. So now um you you're a senior, you graduate, somebody says, Hey, we wanna we wanna talk to this guy. So, so just give me your your first day in the league, just so I can kind of understand how that was. Okay, so I didn't graduate yet. Okay. And remember, I said my senior year I was injured. Uh -huh. um, my junior year balled out, and so I had an opportunity to go play in an All Star game. Even with an injury, I flew up to Boston with uh -huh. two sprained ankles. Right. They hooked me up to this machine that was the worst pain I ever felt. Mm. But when I got off of it, uh, four days of treatment, the ankle sprains were gone. And so oh, I went to this All Star game, balled there. Uh, and I was expecting to get drafted, but missing my uh, senior year, I knew it would be late round, six, okay, seven so round. You drop you back. Okay. Yeah, if if draft, so the Jaguars are calling, they we might take you here. So during the draft, uh, teams are calling. Okay, like hey, we got to pick in the sixth round. Right, we think about taking you. Just be on standby. Okay, we got to pick in fifth round. You know, so it's going like that. Okay, uh, then the draft ended. And I hadn't gotten a call, mm -hmm. but instantly your phone was blowing up with teams. But hey, we want to bring you in as a priority free agent. Okay, we want to bring you in. So I'm with my boy, who was my roommate, Josh, and we're both waiting. Where right. I get the call uh, that the Saints want to bring me in. Okay, I'm like okay, cool. And he got a call right after that. Tampa, we're just chilling, barbecue, just chilling. Um, and so I flew out the next day. It's like that. You okay. Get the call, man. And usually, some sometimes they'll wait a week, just depend on what week the draft falls in, or what you know, what time of the month. Right. But uh, we both flew out the next day, and I get into the Saints locker room. I'm walking through the locker room, like, man, this Drew Brees locker, and this, mm. this uh, Cameron Jordan's locker, and this Marcus Colston. That's when he was still there. But my coach, they had me in the tight ends room. I was like, wait, I'm a wide receiver. It's like, now we brought you here to be a tight end. I was like, all right. And I'm just like, hey, I'm in here. Right. Uh, they start having me, like, put your hand down and things like that. And I was like, man, coach, I don't play tight end. And he was like, yes, you do now. So get with it or get gone pretty so, much. So something that you didn't do ever, they, they'll just tell you, like, hey, this yeah. is what we brought you here for. Yeah. And you, you're you not going to be like, oh, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. You just got to be like, okay. Yeah. And so now you have to learn something or, or learn a discipline of something that, you know, against somebody who probably played this position in his entire life. Yeah, guys who were in the league for playing DN going against uh -huh. a, a wide receiver turn tight end. Right. And uh, so it, that doesn't happen often. Okay. I was a big receiver. And so in college, people would say, like, you're going to be a tight end. But teams would call and be like, are we looking at you for a receiver? Um, right. So when I got there, it was like, well, we want you to be a tight end. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a struggle, though. It was it was a real struggle. What do, what do you think the hardest part about it was? Blocking. It was about blocking. Uh, knowing knowing how to get your feet in the ground. Right. You got Cam Jordan, who's a <laughs> all pro and pro bowler, just moving right. me out the way. Right. So it was stressful, and that's when I was like, man, I don't know if this is for me. I really thought they're like, really? I don't know if this. They didn't pay you either, so you weren't getting paid yet. Okay, this is right. I was more like trial. Well, no, nah, you signed, but you don't get if you're not like a top round pick, first, mm -hmm. second, third. So you mean there's no money? Now they'll give you a signing bonus. Right. Um, some guys get up to the twenties and thirties and maybe right. down as low as five before taxes. So I used to go to Lafayette to Ramon's uh, <laughs> apartment, 
She'd be like, look, they ain't really paying us like that. Let's get a, a bottle of taco this weekend. So that's where we was at still. Oh, man. That's crazy. <laughs> All right. So so how would how did what did you think about that? You know, my yo, my man. I was up in the league and oh, yeah. he come back to get some tacos. <laughs> oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Marketing it on the way. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, well, that, 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 that's smart. That was smart. That was very smart. Okay, so now you're in, right? And like I said, the focus is not, the focus is really not you being in the league. I'm just trying to get everybody to kind of understand the yeah. mindset. Right. Okay. All right, so let's, let's go. We just, we, you just went in the league. So now let's go to, you're about to come out. No, you know what? Let's, let's go here. When you started your your first business, right? Mm-hmm. The one that I seen. Um, what was your mindset, and why did you do that? With, uh, ball? Yeah. Okay. So that was actually my second attempt at business. Uh, okay, go to the first one. Yeah, let's go, go to the go to the first one. So I turned my garage into a, a gym, like a school gym, and I live in a nice neighborhood. So I was thinking. I'm gonna have all of these the people in the neighborhood right. who pay me. I'm in. It. I was in the NFL. Right. Uh, so my my garage had the rubber floors, had a row machine, bike, kettlebells, right. full rack of dumbbells, full weight rack. Okay. Uh, pretty much anything you can find in a gym, I had it right. in there, and uh, it didn't go that way. So mm-hmm. I put all this money into equipment, getting a AC and heater in the garage. Right. And it didn't work out how I planned. So. That was a wash, but the league called me back. So I thought it was over. Okay. The league called me back. <clears throat> I went to training camp with the Seahawks and right. then the, and the Chargers. Mm-hmm. Then that was over. I didn't make the cut then. Right. Um, so then it was like, well, what now? And so a lot of people, not just athletes, but people, period, get into a what now. Okay. When you know something for so long and this is all you focused on and this was the big success story, right. and how it ended. So right. now it's what now? Right. And I went into a point where, uh, I kind of wanted to just chill from social media. I didn't want nobody to see me. I just wanted to chill mm-hmm. while I figured things out. Right. And so in research, I see people talking about trucking and I'm still not doing the research, but thinking that costs too much to get into. If I do it and it doesn't work, then I'm just wasting more money because I just right. lost money on the gym. Right. So uh, I was like, semi, it's probably cost a hundred K. I'm looking at prices. I'm not thinking used or anything like that, but I came mm-hmm. across hot shot. Okay. I was like, well, I know I could drive a dually. Right. I know I could drive, you know, handle this trailer. So I went ahead and got into hot shot. I just researched how to get it started. Right. And one step led to another. And then before you know it, once you put that insurance down payment down, you in too deep to back yeah, out. Yeah, there's no back in yeah. there with that insurance. Down so payment drops on you. You put that in and I just rode with it. And uh, uh-huh. originally I wanted to hire a driver, uh-huh. but my boy was like, you need to drive. You need to understand what the industry is like, what the road is like. Although it's hot shot, you still know what being away from your family is like. Right. You still know what it is like to drive on I-70 in the mountains and things like that. So right. uh, then the way that the money was, I didn't really know what I was doing okay. initially. So I'm trying to come home every weekend, losing money. Right. Uh, I'm glad that I did drive and understand because now in business, I'm still in the same industry. Uh-huh. I know mistakes to help other people like, all right, look, don't do this. Okay. Don't do that. Uh, so my thoughts with trucking was just getting into some type of industry that I knew I could scale right. over time. Training, right. I'm going to have to be there. Okay. I can't hire another trainer to be me. Right. I can hire a trainer, but they won't be me. So, right. you know, with trucks, I'm like, okay, we can add another truck and add another truck and continue to grow the business. So that was my ideas with that. Okay. So but what we'll, we'll gave you the mindset to do that? I mean, did you, did you not feel like, you know, I'm going to be in the NFL for the next nine, ten years? I'm not going to worry about it because yeah. we see a lot of pro athletes within the league, whether it's mm-hmm. the NBA or NFL, they think, okay, you know, I'm going to be in this forever. Right. And so well, money is just going to be chain, 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 chain. I'm not going to worry about it until it's time for me to get out. So what made you really think about, you know what I'm saying, having an exit strategy before it was even time to exit? So I didn't have an exit strategy. January 1st, 2017. We're about to play the Seahawks. It was the last game of the uh, 2016 season, okay. was January 1st. I went up for a ball and came down and my leg snapped. Mm. So, like, where it was dangling. And I, it, I didn't hurt. I just, right. like, who ran into me? I didn't know it was broken. So I tried to right. stand up okay. or get up, and I looked, and the leg just hanging. Like, yeah. And it was like, just stay down, man. Right. And so I'm sitting there like, dang, I was about to play. And so for people who don't know, when you're an undrafted player, like, late round, 
Right. You get money for every play you're on the field. It's called player performance. Oh. And I was starting that game. I knew I was about to get like 50 snaps. So oh. I was like, I'm about to get this player performance. Right. Season, you get the check in like February. It'd be right. like $40,000, $50,000. Okay. So I was looking forward to player performance. So when I was down there with a broken leg, I was like, dang, I'm not getting player performance. <laughs> you ain't worried about the leg. You just, I was like, yeah, this will heal check. up. But, but that check is not performance. coming, right? Yeah. Man. Um, and so my thoughts there were, okay, it's the last game anyways. Off season, I'm going to heal up okay. and get right back to it. It didn't work out that way. So I still had the mindset, I'm going to be in the league forever. I'm going to heal this leg and get back right back on there. Okay. But throughout, throughout rehab, your body changing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you're walking different. So things are thrown off with your body. Right. Uh, anybody who goes through injury, you know, you overcompensate here, or overcompensate there. So when teams didn't call when I expected it, right. it's like, well, what next? When the training didn't go how I expected it, it was like, what next? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so it was always just like I didn't have a plan. Uh -huh. But I was able to make decisions fast enough to beat the curve of right. going broke before I had something that could replace okay. the income. Okay. You know what I mean? So if I could do it again, I would have gotten into transportation a lot earlier. Okay. Or any type of investment, but for me, right. transportation. So Ron, let me ask you this question since you're over here. You know what I'm saying, best friend? So how did you feel? I'm sure you're watching the game, right? Yeah. So you probably could see it from a different vantage point. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, my dog is hurt on this right here. Like how did I would like how did you take that? Right. What's he gonna do next? And you know, we always been discussing business ideas ever since we were young. Ah, uh, okay. So, okay. Cause y'all go back how far? Uh we've known each other since probably was eight. Okay. Uh, right. But he went to a different school. He went to the rival school. Okay. And then he came to the Leesville High School and we right. became good friends. So probably like freshman him. year, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but already you had somebody to trade off business thoughts of the future of us. You know what I'm saying? Even before you wouldn't even think about the league or playing football, but you yeah. said you started playing league. But so, but you had somebody converse about business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In some form or fashion. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so that's good. You know what I'm saying? And your friend was looking out for you right. in that aspect. And one thing I say about Rome when I got released from the Saints, uh -huh. I went and slept on his couch. Okay, like it was never. A, he was the one I could go to and talk about when I wanted to hide from everybody else. It was like, all right, hey, Rome, I just got cut. All right, dog, come here. Right. You know what I mean? And then she's like, all right, what you going to do? Just figuring the next thing out. But I always knew, all right, this dude got my best interest. Mm -hmm. And not really here just for the, the league. But right. it didn't change from high school to college to the league to after right. the league. It's always been the same relationship. But we still got the same jersey, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's still got the same jersey. You know what I'm saying? You know, so the business aspect. Okay, now. So we're gonna we're gonna be um, transitioning now. So you really had a taste of what uh, your first, your second business, which was the hot shot business, wow. right? And is successful, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think that's where I probably noticed you. You know what I'm saying when you first wow. started out on, on YouTube, when you first started out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying I know I noticed you, and um, so I kind of know that time period. So what made you even think about? Not just driving, like, you know what, I'm just gonna have a business. Mm -hmm. So what made you go into the YouTube aspect of it? So, you know, I'm gonna start a channel. Okay, yeah, so because of my journey getting started, the information that I didn't find on YouTube and, right. I, and that I did find, I was like, well, I think it'll be cool to show me coming from nothing, no experience in the, in trucking to hot shot. I know a lot of people are looking for what it's like to start. So right. I wanted to document as a newbie with no experience in anything. My okay. first load, I was looking at other people to like, hey, how I strapped this down. Right. You know, so I thought I was excited. I was like, man, I got 100 subscribers. When it took like a okay. month or two. I was like, right. I got 100 subscribers. This is crazy. And now it's at 12,000. And I'm like, crazy, right? Yeah, I'm you like, know, you, you were looking at those hundreds like you was doing it. Like, yeah. You know, doing it big. Right. And then I've seen how many people wanted the information mm. and how much it was helping. And people right. like, man, I started the company off your channel. I got True. into this because of you. Uh, it just made me feel not obligated, but like it was a duty of mine to okay. share the real about it. Right. And, and so uh, I remember when you hit me up and about the book, I was right. using the military here. You know right. what I mean? Like, uh, right. thank you for your service. And then what that. What that act has done for this relationship, right? And, and it's crazy. Something so small, you know what I'm saying? Not the book, but I'm saying so small just to ask somebody for something, and he's just like, "No, nah, man," you know. And um, and I and I think I did see something. I saw your tattoo on. You know, I saw it first. I'm like, oh. and I think that's when I mm -hmm. asked you. You know what I'm saying? Hey, why do you have that? And you told me why. But um, but I will tell you this right here. 
I'm a person of um. I don't like charging people for things. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm one of those people, man. I just like I like giving information out. Wow. It's just me, and so even by you doing that, man, it really kind of set a staple for me to make sure that if I ever ever created a platform or something, mm-hmm. right, I was going to make sure that um, one that the content will be available for everybody. You know what I'm saying? So I thank you for that. You know what I'm saying? And you were my first experience and somebody saying, here, take this right here mm-hmm. without charge. You know what I'm saying? You know, we get into later on what everybody's doing nowadays, but um, <laughs> that I think is crazy. Okay. So um, a lot of people, that's my, a lot of people would just start something, but now um, you sit here and say, hey, this is, this is kind of doing it right now. Mm-hmm. This, this can do something. You know what I'm saying? You know, oh, you know what? Let me pause. So when did you get into the community stuff? Because that's something I noticed about you too. You were doing stuff, toy drives and things like that. Yeah. So how did that come hand in hand? Well, that just that was always something that I wanted to do. But like I said, we're from a small town where we didn't want to live at. So I kind of had to plant roots in Dallas and meet people to be able to get into that uh <laughs> I guess, feel the service. And so it started with the juvenile centers. I'll go speak to them. And I really wanted to talk to them, not as an NFL player, although that's what got me in there, but more on the life side. Because right. when, you, when you're a professional athlete, people cloud everything else with that. So who right. you are as a human, what type of intellectual uh, being you are, the, the different thoughts and worlds you have is clouded because you're in the NFL. So I used to go in there just with the real life. Hey, here's right. what it is. Y'all get in trouble. Don't get in trouble to where you can't do something uh-huh. after you turn 18. You know, stop. And and right. some of it worked. Some of the hardest ones in there who didn't look like they paid attention afterwards would be all around me. So that seeing that engagement was like, OK, even though they look how they looking at you, right. they really want this attention from somebody who's speaking uh-huh. life into them. Okay, got um, it. So then I just began looking and from one speaking engagement to the next, you're getting different connections. Like, right. you know, this person told somebody else you came, so they want you to come. Um, and then from that, the uh, Excellence Foundation became a board member there. Okay, so tell me about the Excellence Foundation, what you do there. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a board member. Pretty much we just work on decisions. And then COVID is kind of hard, but we work on, uh, so they got STEM program, robotics teams. Sports is what we get to draw people in because a lot of young athletes in Dallas, but they got to go through tutoring before they do anything. OK, um, the CEO is a, a CTO for an engineering company. So he right. got the whole technology side. Oh, okay. going. Great. And so it's really like a full circle. You can get your athletics, but also your education and then opened up to not only a CTO, but an engineer, right. someone who's been working in uh, for General Motors at mm-hmm. a high level. Not that, so these are all different people. We got a venture capitalist in there, a financial coach, me and a professional, you know, professional athlete turned entrepreneur. Right. So now whereas a kid might only see the professional athlete, they see what you talked about earlier, exposure. Okay. I don't even know what an engineer is, mm. tell me more. I don't know right. what a venture capitalist is, tell me right. more. So pretty much where the board comes together and it comes up with ideas that we can do uh, different events to be able to just market the right. different things that are available to the youth of Dallas. And so, yeah, and that's great. And that's why I highlighted that point when you were when you were in um in college, you know, yeah. exposure up in right. Arkansas and Auburn, Auburn. Because what happens is with these kids, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, individuals who never seen an engineer, wouldn't know what an engineer was, you know what I'm saying? To be able to be in front of, be able to talk to on a day to day basis, you know what I'm saying, see people from different backgrounds, you know what I'm saying, different professions, like that is something that can spark something in some kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, and, and that's great. And so by you even being, you know, a draw of, uh, okay, he was, he was a pro athlete, he's an entrepreneur, he's a businessman. I mean, that's amazing to a lot of people, man. It, it really is. It really is. I'm sure a lot of kids tell you that, right? Yeah, yeah. They So, like I said, the, the pro athlete part brings them in, but gives me the chance to tell them about more. Because right. chances are, the kids, all of them can't go to the league. True. So what will be next? And they get to talk about their what next before they're forced to. Right. So what are you going to do after high school? Right. And so they like the sports part, but I try to tell them and, and drive home to them that what I did after that is really when life began. Uh, and so hopefully it's sticking with them. I remember my coach used to tell me stuff that at the time I didn't listen to. Uh-huh. And then now as a man, I'm like, that's what Coach Williams meant. Right. You know, so that's pretty much I'm just trying to 
pass that along like he passed that to me. Right. So how, how do some of the kids take it when you probably tell them, like, listen, man, it, it, you know, everybody doesn't make it too late. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, kind of focus on your book. So focus on something, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Because it's not guaranteed you're going to make it. So how do you see some of the kids take it? Because I'm sure some kids, like, that's their only thing they've had on their mind their entire life. Yeah. Um, they're receptive usually. And I don't know if it's just because I'm there and they're trying to be respectful. Right. But I, what I say to them, I'm sure will come back to them at some point in life. But they're usually pretty receptive. You do have some who really don't believe. And it's not even being an athlete. They don't really believe that there's anything for them outside the streets. Oh, OK, Got it. Like we're not we're not working with uh, privileged kids. We're working with kids who come from some rough background. OK. And so. Privileged kids, get, they, they parents could pay for club. Right. Their parents could pay for because something. They, have exposure. they got exposure. They got right. the network. We're giving free camps away to the kids in the South Dallas to get them around athletes and engineers and things like that. Right. Uh, so you do see some who just, and I won't say they're lost causes, but it appears that they probably lost hope in anything other than what they know because okay. of exposure. Right. So when we have our events, we try to take it out of the area, uh-huh. put it in places that they probably okay. haven't been to okay, got bring it. people around that probably wouldn't see without us doing it. Right. And now that that small four hour window uh-huh. opens them up to a whole nother lifestyle that they weren't seeing before. And, and definitely and allows them really to focus on everything there and not be, you know, part of the normal environment. Right. And understand everything they normally see. You know right. what I'm saying? So let me ask you this wrong. Um, so a, as your friend comes through this transition, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's showing that he's the ultimate businessman, things you guys have discussed about, discussed um, for years. And, and you're watching it just transform your eyes. Like, what did that make you do? Okay, talk about it. He's doing all this. I'm starting to, you know, become interested in the trucking game now myself. Um, I'm starting to ask him questions, starting to do my own research. At this point, we start having business meetings. Um, mm-hmm. It starts breaking right. down to me what is, you know, operations are and at that point that's when i was interested in investing oh man that's great that's what that's what i'm talking about you say more education more literacy you know what i'm saying and things like that and of course you know you got a you got a, a great cast of individuals you're with up there in dallas so now i see the times i get to look at instagram and i see you working out in the mornings every morning big week doing his thing you know what i'm saying <laughs> um you know shout out to him and his service to the military you know what i'm saying i've seen him was a flight suit on, so I don't know what branch you Okay, in. no, so their cat is the CTO. Okay. So he, they design military aircraft. Okay. So when he, when he had that on, it's to go show the kids, like, what it's like uh, to be yeah. okay. and flying them. So whenever you see military planes, right. you go, oh, that's a whatever, whatever, we design that. Right. Like, okay. That's, that's what I'm talking about. You know, that's a good thing in my military service, I'm an aviation guy. I'm mm-hmm. saying I was, um, I was a government candidate. You know I'm saying? And so the thing about it is the USB Black Hawk. You know, um, so I was a helicopter guy, you know, what they call us, you know what I'm saying? Just flying around and fixing it for breaks, you know what I'm saying? And shooting out of it and you get shot down, you got to fix it and get them out of there. So um, just being in aviation was a great thing. So mm-hmm. the aeronautical field and, you know, a lot of us, we go to Emory Riddle, we get a professional aeronautics degree. That's one of the things we do, just being in there, you know what I'm saying? Because you're in aviation, it's kind of simple. Mm-hmm. But um, so, so that's great. But I do see a lot of the work that, that he's doing. Mm-hmm. up there and I, I think it's a great thing you right. know and i think it's great like once again exposure yeah you know and, and exposure is probably gonna be the main point one of the main points as we talk about this evening right. because i think a lot of people you know saying they're not in situations where they can have exposure mm-hmm. and i think if people are in those situations where they can have exposure it will open different things up in them i mean would you agree yeah i, I would say also a lot of people don't put themselves in to have exposure or to be exposed by sticking to what's comfortable mm-hmm. you know and it's very easy to get stuck in what's comfortable but being able to put yourself in a vulnerable position knowing you always got what's comfortable to go back to so why not step out on faith or step out on the limb or whatever you want to call it right to put yourself around people who could help you the worst thing that can happen is they can't help you true true the best thing that can happen is they say one thing there's been conferences I go to where one thing might have been said. I'm like, I'm about to take that back to my business. Right, I'm about right. to take that back to my life. And so now now exposure is not a one event, a one time event. It's a, a stack of events. You know, I got exposed to this person. They said this. They said they do this. And you got to kind of formulate your own rhythm or system. But a lot of people fear trying something and failing. So they rather just fail continuously. Right. Right. You know, so. Yeah. What's your thoughts, Ron? Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, a lot of people are just 
pray. You know, when people are afraid to take those chances, they feel vulnerable. Uh, for new situations. Right, because because it's not always a win, you know. what I'm saying yeah. people oh, people yeah. really think in business, you know. And sometimes I think some of those uh, unwin, some call them those, right? They're not failures. Those unwin, you know, say we learn something, is grow. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying I don't mind failing. Trust me, right? Because if I failed, I just look at it, it was a growth opportunity, right? And so if we look at that, we are always talking about getting better. You know, what I'm saying you know, and um and I, and I, I I'm gonna probably keep saying it, man. It's just the things y'all are doing up there, man. It's amazing. You know, what I'm saying I, I see the look in the kids' eyes, you know. When they're doing stuff and it's look like they, they wanted to be there mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying but they don't really understand the exposure that they're having mm-hmm. like the great men you know what i'm saying that they're around you know, so the great women they're around you know what i'm saying and, and what these people do and what they bring to the table right. how many days of the week are you i'm sure that you're impressed you know what I'm saying from a business aspect mm-hmm. about the people that you're exposed to every day even from being with the excellent foundation right and so like like you said our day starts me and Chad link up and, and wrong word too if you lived in Dallas, but uh me and Chad link up 515 every morning. Drive 35 minutes to us to our gym, uh owned by Melvin Sanders, who's played for the Spurs. He's another part of my network out there. In the morning, you see the people who are up grinding because they gotta go handle business at a certain time. You see CEOs. People pulling up and, and we not pulling up and business right. or anything, but you see the people around. Yeah, you, 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 you can though. Right. But anyway, they, that, they, live Highland <laughs> Park. they live in Highland Park. They, uh, <laughs> but you see like these uh, housewives coming, diamonds right. all over. Like, what what is your husband doing? I ask, what do y'all do? Oh, well, we, we own spas all over the place. We right. own medical Exposure. equipment, things like that. Exposure. And then you get to have these type of conversations with them. Well, what was your thoughts? How'd you get started? And so the people around that gym, you got motivated people. Nobody who's unmotivated is going to be up at 530 right. or in the gym at 530. Uh, so that drives you. Then once you create your own mark in there, people expect to see you. So if you miss a day, not only is your circle holding you accountable, but the people right. who are watching you and you realize right. how many people watch what you do when you put yourself in the position to be somebody to be looked up to. So okay. we're there. We're there five every morning or 530 every morning. For two weeks, if we miss a day, they're like, where y'all been? Right. It's like, I didn't even notice you noticed me in here. Well, yeah, you missed Monday. And they were using you as a notch. and You motivated them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they would look forward to that right. because y'all were holding them accountable. Right. And y'all didn't even know it. You know what I'm exactly. saying? That's crazy. So now we know that. So now we go in there and we're the only ones in there with no trainer. Everybody else has it. They're, it's a right. personal training gym. So it's a bunch of individual trainers. OK. Uh, but I'm, I was in the league. I don't need a right. trainer. So we go in there and do our thing. But um, just being able to be around those people and, and for them, the people I, I feel like I'm getting exposed to, uh-huh. to look for me to be in there and to be a part of their daily routine is amazing. That it, it's grown to that. They don't know anything about football until I tell them. Right. Yeah. So do you, you think that it makes you a better, it, it has made you a better businessman by having these different exposures? You know what I'm saying to these people who mm-hmm. you can sit here and ask because every day you had the interest to ask, hey, what do you do? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Evidently, it was some point of, you know, I can get something mm-hmm. from it. I can take something from this conversation, you know what I'm saying, and make myself better. Do you feel like that happens to you? For sure, because I go in and I pr- talk proudly about my business operation. Um, and then from that conversation, somebody may be like, well, my, my buddy has a dad who does construction and they always need equipment hauled. Or I had a call today, a luxury Peruvian handcrafted furniture, and they don't like their shipping solutions now. And the dude in the gym see me and was like, hey, let me reach out. I, I heard you talking about trucking one day. Right. And so in that aspect, yes. And then also just with with growth, because there's some things I haven't heard about that somebody with a multi-million, multi-billion dollar company has. Right. And so just I learned something today. It was level of effort. Okay, talk to me about that. So, so I was in a in a in the car with Chad, and like I say, he's up with the engineers and building all different type of things. And they were having a meeting, and someone asked what the LOE was. So I was like, "What does LOE mean?" And and when they're creating these things for other companies, it's the level of effort. So outside of everything that the final product, what's the level of effort that I have to put in? To create it to because create i'm charging product. for that okay got it so got loe it. might have a different price if i got to do more work right and so that's just something i've heard it i was like what is loe right stuck with me so now 
I can put that in. Hey, this is my LOE. Right. This is my rate. This is LOE. Right. And, you then, know? and if we take it down to some simplistic terms, it's like that. Okay, this particular thing that weighs this amount mm-hmm. and it takes more of my trailer. It right. LOE. There it is. And versus this thing that only that weighs a certain amount and only takes half of my trailer. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying they're having to take it the fuel cost it's going to cost you know what I'm saying the wear and tear is going to be on my equipment you know what I'm saying those are the things we have to think about right and you just want to soak up info because if you're around somebody who's having a conversation right and they say LOE and you come back and say oh yeah the level of effort ain't a lot you know something I never want to be a person who's not learning in a room where I should be learning so I'm never I got friends when we start talking business and start talking uh growth or numbers or anything that's about advance and they right. like all right y'all got it i'm gonna check out right. hit me back when y'all talking about working out and i'm like why wouldn't you want to get in on this conversation mm. of stuff you don't know right. well because i don't understand it well how are you gonna right. understand it from the sideline right it wouldn't be a better reason to stick around because you don't understand it right that goes back to the fear though mm. i don't need to know that if i right. know if i know what's available to me and i don't accept it then I know I failed. If I don't know it's available to me, then I, I, I don't feel fail. like I failed. Okay, okay. You know, that's crazy. What you think about that, Ron? Yeah, true. Yeah, and so many people didn't want to do that. And so that kind of leads to the, the what piece I'm saying, where a lot of players come out of the league, whether it's NBA or NFL, a lot of them, they're like at a stop loss. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And, and I'm sure you've heard that and you see it continuously, right? right. You know what I'm saying? Why do you think that is the case. I, identity. Because their identity is wrapped into what they're doing. So if you start playing Pee Wee in junior high and high school, college, NFL, you've pretty let's say your whole life you've been either around football or playing football and then it's over. I've been identifying as a football player this whole time. So now what are people gonna call me? And especially and you'll see it quick when the league is over, the phone call stop, the messages stop. So now you're not only are you lost, your identity is lost, but your self-esteem is hit because people don't look at you the same. Uh, okay. Right. And, and to not know what else there is available or to attempt. A lot of people just say I'm a football player and I don't have it anymore. So I'm chilling. Hmm. And it's unfortunate. And you would think that the drive and the, and the type of work ethic that we build in the league would create more tenacity when, right. when you get out. Right. It doesn't. It's, it's guys who go from working hard in the league to chilling because they want to go in either in hiding. Right. They're embarrassed. It's really weird. And I tell people this. You almost get more like bad looks or like, oh, pity for going to the league and getting cut or getting out of the league than you do for never going to the league. It's like after, yeah, when I get out the league, people are like, oh, God, gonna, it's going to be all right, baby. <laughs> right. I'm, like, Bro, I, I'm not even feeling that way. Right. Um, but like I say, their identity is lost in, into what they were doing and, and not into who they are. Right. And so um, I've known more than a few athletes mm-hmm. that have, um, have finished the league, particularly the NFL. Um, and they were on high times the whole time they were in the league. I tell you, you know, you know, their little brothers, uh, you know, people around my age and, you know, uh, they come back, they ride the cars and, mm-hmm. you know, mama's in the big house. And, and, and it's so sad that I will see some of these guys, their mama, their mother goes back, go back to their other house, the original house or an apartment. And the guy's working at, he's a, he's the coach, assistant coach in high school, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And um, because they probably had such a big head mm-hmm. before and now they're deflated. And if it's somebody, like it's nothing they can do. And that's what I was exposed to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Me, me just coming up, I was exposed to that. And so and I just, I did think it was sad, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, like that, man. Right? So, I do have a question for you, Tom. So, when you're in the league, do they have anybody in the league that's trying to let you guys know what, what comes next? Yeah, they do. So, they, but you on high times, you're not trying to hear, especially when you're a rookie. You feel like I'm. I'm a rookie. I'm going to be in the league. I'm going to make 10 million, 20 million right. straight. Like I can afford to buy this car right now. Right. So they do have people come in and try to teach you certain things, but you're not really trying to listen because you're going from a college pill check to 15 K a week or something like that. Right. Yep. Man, that, that, that's, that's, that's really sad. Ooh, that's gotta be, that's gotta be. So, what do you do? Do you, do you reach out to some of the guys that are still in the league and 
and try to help them out. You know what I'm saying? Just knowing that you were, you know what I'm saying, a former player. So a lot of guys who I don't know in the league uh, or who are getting out who reach out to me about trucking. They come across the channel, and me being a former NFL player is our our connection. Right. But when I was in the league, I didn't create as many relationships as a lot of other guys. I, I'm a very small circle kind of guy. So it was never about football. If we could connect on something outside of football, then you my boy. Um, so like Rome has met my boys who've been in the league and it's a very small group. Even our high school friends and groups and or our college friends group, we're a small knit group. Right. Um if somebody reaches out to me, old teammates, anything like that, then yeah, I'll, I'll tell them what I got going on, but I can't put the drive in them to go do it. Just tell them what's available to them, what I know is available to them. Right. And uh, it's on them to still make the leap. But you got that fear of now I'm out the league. Do mm -hmm. I really want to use some of my last money to try to make this business decision? It's a, it's a what's it called? Slippery slope. <laughs> I still don't know what that means, but I think it works right here. Right. It's a slippery slope. Uh, but where I can, yeah, I do help okay. and try to try to let them know. And it, I would love to get back in there. But that's the same thing to people who are coming to us. They're former NFL players right. coming back. So I, I might just be another guy like, all right, I'm a rookie. I'm not trying, trying to, to listen to that. But I think one thing that I did well, and I think Rome could speak better on it, when I was in the league, I never changed up much. If I had a good time, maybe maybe our club and days got a little better, but right. it was still with my boys. I wasn't doing it like on the regular. I, right. After the season, first trip would be to Houston. And uh, or Lafayette. Well, it was Houston at that time, so I want to come to Houston mm -hmm. and do one one weekend of balling out with my boys, and then that would be it. But other than that, still the same, always the same, and always that's the same. Thing. That's one thing I think that helped me transition, and my my expenses didn't really get too crazy because right. I always knew it would be over at some point, and I wasn't a first round pick, so I really didn't have it like people might think. Right. Everybody in the league ain't got it like that. No, you know, no. They got it good, but there are people with regular careers who are making a lot more than a lot of people in the league. Okay. I hate to, I hate to, I hate to burst that bubble for people, but everybody ain't rich, right? Well, you know, I guess because everybody just really caught up in the fact that hey, you're in the league, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, that, that to them it equates to money. You're right, right. right. But uh, it's one thing I did here, you know, years ago when I used to be. You know, running through Atlanta a little bit, you know, all the ladies tend to knew who and what made who made what money. Mm -hmm. And I used to feel, how do you do that? And they, they said, well, their salary is public. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. so I guess they would Google people, you know, see what their contract was or see what their signing bonuses were. Right. Or you know? net worth, which all that stuff is inaccurate. Right. Online. Because if you go to practice squad or something like that, or you get released, you're not getting paid for that. Your contract still posted, though. Oh, really? It look yeah, you it, it still says your contract for 2018 is a million, but you might have got cut week one. So you're not getting you're not getting that. You're getting week one check and that's it. <laughs> off season and then off season you don't get paid uh, unless you got like something special in your contract, like which you usually get that second contract. But most most players, I say 85% of players players aren't getting paid much or at all in the off season. Ah, okay. <laughs> Is it in the NFL? Is it a check per game? Is yeah. that how they work? 17 weeks, 17 checks. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Do you know any players who were living from check to check? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Players go off season. Then you got eight months of getting a little bit of money or no money, depending on what time of the year. When you go to OTAs, they give you like a few hundred a week, seven, okay. eight hundred a week. So you go all this time. You done built the lifestyle off of four weeks of right. checks. Right. You got eight weeks of reality. And that four weeks spread, you're not really managing it right. Or, you know, you think in 17 weeks, I'm getting this every week. But most people don't make it stretch across 12 months. And so financial literacy is, is tough when you're right. getting a bunch of money thrown at you at one right. time for a lot of people. So do they have like a lot of financial people? And I'm only asking this because it's going to come back into the business side when people get out mm -hmm. of the league. So are they preaching financial literacy when they, when the guys come in? Yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll have those uh, classes with you, but you, you're still on you to find your own financial advisor and things like that. What you find is a lot of people have 
trust issues with financial advisors. Okay. So it's almost like you get the money and you want to hold it, but you let a little go, but you want to hold on to it. You, you let it go on stuff that it has to go on, but not necessarily, I don't want to trust this person to manage my money because they may do what's in their best interest right. and not mine. And so a lot of people don't trust financial advisors. They don't feel like they have enough to invest, and but they still have regular bills that takes it away. So you're in a position where looking back, me personally, looking back, mm -hmm. I I came from no money in college anyway, so I might right. as well have done things a little different. Uh, there are some people who never realize that, unfortunately, we right. just keeping it real, you know, and I don't really judge them because I understand what it's like. Everybody says what they would do. Okay. Uh, if I made this, I would. Okay, it make happen. it, you know, go make it and then see if that's what you really would do uh, because that fear sets in. Right. How am I going to talk about investing a hundred thousand when I never seen a hundred thousand? Right. But you can talk about it. But when you actually get that money, are you really about to just hand over a hundred k to Friday to do something with? Um, people are gonna say they would, but there's a lot of emotions in money. My mom wrote a book called Money Emotions. There's a lot of emotions. In money emotions. Money emotions. Money emotions. Money yeah, emo yeah, like money. Money emotions. Emo yeah, okay. yeah, money emotions. What's my name? Sonya Ham. Hey, I need everybody to go out and, and purchase Sonya Ham's book. Say it again. Money Motion. Money Motion. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's about. Is it on Amazon? I don't know. Okay, we're gonna look and see if it's on. Somebody, somebody, look and see if it's on Amazon yeah, for me it and, and type it's it not, in for me. Nah, I'm gonna tell her put it on there. She That's right. We, right we, we need to go ahead and uh, make that happen right there. Mama Ham, we're gonna get her some um, some more bread. Out of it, okay. <laughs> money <laughs> Motion. But, uh, yeah, the emotions behind money is crazy. You got people right. who feel less than when they don't have money and okay. feel more than when they do. Right. You got people who don't want money because they feel like it's evil. You got, you know, it's just different right. things behind it. Right. Um, so when you get a certain sums, kind of, especially at a young age. Right. So it's, it was cool. Uh, Tony M said, awesome info that's rarely spoken. You right? Hey, let me, let me tell you something. Hey, Tony M is, is, is good people. He's with me every What's show. Up? What's up, Tony? Tony's with me every show. So, you know, shout out to him. But um, you're right. You're right, Tony. And and this is where we're going to get it here on Fivecast. We're getting exclusive. We're getting yeah. the questions asked, answered, and everything, you know, because I, I thought a lot of things. I thought in the field, I thought everybody was paid. I thought everybody got in. Everybody's making minimum $200,000 a year. Oh, everybody. The kicker, yeah, well, not the kicker, but anybody. I don't care who it is. I'm thinking everybody get two hundred thousand. I'm thinking everybody driving Maybachs and and big mansions. Nah, anything I remember, Tad, you getting getting hit hit hard. So going to the charges, it's like yeah, we gonna Philip charge. Rivers you. was the uh, most tax player one time. Are you serious? Yeah, somebody Ooh. fact checked me, but what Ooh. I read, what I read was oh right. God. It was a lot. Are you serious? It was a lot. Yeah. Hey, Tony. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, um, somebody was talking to somebody in the room. That's, that's, that's cool. Okay, but so from the business sense of the NFL, mm -hmm. understanding that and how money flowed and everything, do you think that made you a better entrepreneur, businessman? Yeah, yeah, because you learn to not spin before you know where the next money is coming from. Okay, because in the league, we think we're gonna be in a long time, but mm -hmm. you don't know. If you're gonna get cut today, you don't right. know if they're gonna come tap you and say, "Bring your iPad." And that's mm -hmm. how it works. By so the that's way. how it works. I mean, there's oh, no, yeah. there's no, um, no meetings, dates or nothing like that. It's just straight up. Yeah, you might have practice. You laugh with your boys, and then somebody tap you on the shoulder and say, "So, like, the show hard knocks is real." Oh yeah, fact. So it's real. Yeah, yeah. We need we need you to bring your iPad. To uh, so I think yeah, in business because especially seeing a large sum of money at one time before. Seeing it again, I'm like, okay, right. Especially, you know, in transportation, you got to worry about overhead and, and breakdowns, things like right. that. So I'm even more cautious about spending anything. Right. But uh, just understanding money and understanding that it can come fast, but it can go fast. And so I think having that kind of financial responsibility and, and, right. and due diligence and, and studying where to put it, how to save it, where to invest it, and things like that helped me a lot. Someone told you, say, what's the name of the book again? Uh, Money Motions. Money Motions. And what's my name again? Sign Your Hand. That's what I'm talking about. Sign Your Hand. Listen, Sign Your Hand got the book of the, you know, I, I put out a hot book today that, um, that I purchased today. 
Um, my girl, Legacy Blue, she mm -hmm. just came out, with, just retired 34 years in the Air Force. She wrote an amazing book, you know what I'm saying? I bought 10 copies today. Mm -hmm. And um, they'll be delivered Monday, and I'll be I'll be giving out nine copies because okay. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read one of them um Monday night, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna have her on the show Thursday, Friday. Oh nice, yeah, nice. that's how we're doing it. Yeah. We, we, we gotta go hard, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. anybody's calling in, they're gonna have to buy 10 books. You know what I'm saying? That's how we do it. Because we have to support businesses, right? right? That's what we and if we all do that, I'm trying to tell you, mm -hmm. go to the moon. Yeah, right. That's sure. what we have to do. Okay, so now by transportation, do you as an entrepreneur, are you only stuck with transportation or are you already looking at other things? No, Talk to me. Other things for sure. Uh, because as we all seen when COVID hit, transportation slowed down a lot. Okay. So there are other other facets of transportation, brokering and things of, of that such in the transportation field, but then I always want to get into real estate. You just gotta realize real estate is slow money. Mm -hmm. Rental properties is slow money. Uh, you got all the new things coming out with wholesaling and Airbnbs and things like that. Okay. Um, I got a investment portfolio as well, and that just sits. So that's not really an active thing. Um, but I'm constantly looking for more because I, I'm the type of person that can't get stuck. I, mm. I don't want to say I mastered transportation, but right. I know I'm pretty good at it. You right. know what I mean? I'm sure there's more to learn, but it doesn't require as much energy as when I first started. So right. now what's going to be the next thing that requires energy that just has me at the computer researching all day? That other, other stream. That, right? uh, yeah, that next thing. Uh, right. A lot of streams have come for transportation, though, because outside of the trucking side, we got the ebooks and right. then the mentorships and things like that. Um, YouTube as well. So right. those. Those little that money adds up to oh, yeah. to I tell know. people all day them, them, them threes and fours. Oh yeah, yeah I, I, love, sure. I love doing math. You know what I'm saying? Sure. You know, I was talking to somebody today, hey, man, great friend of mine. I was telling them, I said, hey, you know, um growing in, in business is like a calculator, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta look at everything as you just push the plus sign. And yeah. you know you're gonna push the equal sign. In. You you know you're gonna push it. Mm -hmm. But as long as you keep pushing those pluses, I'm telling you. The plus could be 100. The plus could be 200. It could be 50. It could be three. It doesn't matter. But you know, at some point, you're going to push the equal sign. Yeah. And it's going to mount out to everything. Wow. So you just keep pushing toward it, right? You know, okay. So you, so you got other revenue streams or things set up to become revenue mm -hmm. streams, you're saying, which is great. And you're not trying to look at things to be like a one trick pony when I yeah. call people. Or I call things when people just focus on one thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's almost like the athlete focusing only on the sport. Mm -hmm. And knowing that the sport is going to end at some point, you know, right. I even I even say it um, even from a military standpoint, some people get so caught up in the military, which is great. You know what I'm saying? But but OK, it's going to end. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that, that was your only lifeline where the same money that was coming in when you're in is not going to come in that same way. You know what I'm saying? You need to focus on something else or create something that can generate. Right. And it doesn't have to be something that generates a lot mm -hmm. okay here's my philosophy i'll sit here and think of something right um because um sometimes people consider, consider themselves as a business person um an entrepreneur or successful entrepreneur mm -hmm. that's the kind of three cat classification i put people in you know what i'm saying and the reason why because you can be in business and work for some company and be very successful and make thousands mm -hmm. of millions of dollars you know yeah. what I'm saying? and because you're a great business man you, you know how to manage and all this stuff like this then you can have entrepreneurs who um, everybody probably aspires to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but a lot of entrepreneurs face it do not make any money. Yeah, why is that though? I don't know. Why why has entrepreneurship become like a it's a romanticized yeah. word? It brings a sugar high to people for some odd reason, and everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. And it's crazy. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a it's romanticized crazy. thing now. It yeah. sounds good, so why? Why? And and I. I if you're on social media, you've seen the debates nine to five. And I don't really like when people post these nine to five versus entrepreneurship posts. Right. Because everybody's not meant to be an entrepreneur. True. You know, and then if everybody was, then we wouldn't have the world we have. Not that the world we have right now. Right. Right. That's the best. But mm -hmm. facts. Right. And you have to understand that, man, the process. You know yeah. Saying? You know what I'm saying? And, and be able to take the loss. That's the biggest thing I think about successful mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. They're willing to take the loss. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Willing. I'm saying they want to take it, but they're willing to take it. They yeah. understand that loss comes with it. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you're not, oh my God, I don't want to do that. No, I don't do that because that's going to cause this right here. Well, you probably just an entrepreneur because mm -hmm. you got to understand, you know, the successful ones, if you look at it, study them all, man. 
they took it down to the wire. Yeah. The successful ones. Like they were Byron Allen. You know what I'm saying? If you really look at his story, you know what I'm saying? The guy who owns the Weather Channel. You know what I'm saying? I watched Byron Allen since I was a young boy. Back like when he was on this little corny show. I didn't know it was his show. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, and this was from a little kid when I was like nine, ten years old. And so for this guy to continue on and to own the Weather Channel, yeah. come on, man. You know, come on. This guy say he was in his house, his phone was cut off. You know what I'm saying? His house was in like second mortgage. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't know where the money was coming from, but he believed in everything he believed in as an entrepreneur. And he risked everything he had, man. Yeah. And most of these successful entrepreneurs, they did that. I'm not saying everybody has to do that, but they were willing to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so they had this thing in them. They're like, hey, I'm willing to lose it all. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I believe so much in myself. The you know, same thing you probably did as an athlete. You believed in yourself so much, and you're supposed to. Yeah. Because somebody right behind you was saying, you know what, Jay, I love your homeboy, but I play the same position as you. Mm -hmm. And if you miss a step in practice, yeah, guess what? Get ready. Get ready. ready. For you. Right? You know, I say we're in a, uh, a designer world or a flashy world, and entrepreneurship is a designer word now. And so with Byron Allen, that was there was no social media to post. I'm an entrepreneur. It right. just did it. He grinded and got it out, right? Uh, and I don't mean to step on any toes, but there are a lot of people who, you know, may make 10 shirts and sell them. And now they're an entrepreneur. Is that real entrepreneurship? I never I never call myself an entrepreneur I'm a CEO. Right. I run a, I run a company. Right. People who are saying they're entrepreneurs now aren't really grinding like they, mm -hmm. they, they're not really trying to take it. I asked somebody, where, where do you see a company? Um, I'm trying to remember what type of business it was. It might have been like like lashes or something like that. But right. where do you see your company? Well, I'm not really trying to make a ton. Then you're not an entrepreneur. You just got a little side hustle. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, they took that. Uh, they they took it. They took it well. I didn't say it in a mean way. I just like right. okay. You just got to be realistic with what your goals are. And the word has just been so overly used because of social media because it sounds good that I think it takes away from it. From people who really are entrepreneurs and really are building million dollar companies. Right. Um, not that it changes anything, but that just goes back to why is this word so romanticized now? And mm. it goes back to sounding good. I got a Louis bag and I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> I, just, I just made a post on Instagram. Yeah. Right? You know, so you know, I'm doing a big. Um, I, I will say a lot of people will not be able to handle the level of work that goes into running a, a real operation right and that's okay because that goes back to everybody's not meant to right you know what what it go through why does everybody feel that they are you know what i'm saying and they just well you can't say that i'm not an entrepreneur you can't say that well um mm -hmm. um okay i can't say it but you're not they want what <laughs> they want what they they want what they think you are or they want the finished product okay they don't want the curating they don't want mm -hmm. the waiting they don't want the I don't think it's going to work part. Mm. They don't want any of those. You, you said waiting. Yeah, oh, waiting. Right. They don't want that. Mm. They, they want. They want the finished you. There are people who forget. <laughs> I was on the road before. You know, right. there, there are people who don't even remember that. And like, right. man, you just oh, you doing it? Right. Like, man, I was gone from my family for weeks at a time on, in the snow, in scared, the snow. stuck, yeah. sliding. How about you, the snowman, one time. Yeah. Like, Dude, every time I see you in the snow. Yeah, you you <laughs> said something about that. Um, and then just in in any industry, there. are the startup part is the hardest part, but right. they see the finish, the finish part, and they think they want what you have because mm -hmm. now, now the the image of success is attractive, but what it takes to get there is not. Nobody right. talks about man. I love that you failed. They, right. they love that you succeeded, but they don't mm -hmm. care. Those failures are like ah, oh, that's what scares people away, and so they think they want what you have. Then when they get started and realize, I didn't know all this came with it. Right. They they fold real quick. Mm. Then they started to talk bad about oh, that ain't for me. Right. It's for everybody, but the effort and, and the the amount of time and work ethic you put into it isn't for you. Right. You know, it's kind of like Jordan Bill Right. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the captions that showed him sitting in a, in a tub at home. He's just sitting there and say, you know what? Everybody sees, you know, the games and all this stuff like this, but they don't see the broken toes. Mm -hmm. They don't see the pain I go through as I have the soap. You know what I'm saying? And hot baths and ice water. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I can't, I can barely walk. And they think my walk is a natural walk, but it's really a hurt because I'm going to have arthritis when I'm older. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and it goes back to that weight. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a popcorn society 
in business now. You know, everybody wants the quick thing. Hey, give me give me eight hundred ninety nine dollars. And guess what I'm going to do? Mm -hmm. You're going to have a trucking business. You're going to have a lash business. You're going to have a hair business. You're going to have a business of business. Just give me eight ninety nine now. Ooh. Right. You don't step on toes. Before. You know me. I'm old toes. <laughs> now. You know what I'm saying? Man. And that's why I slowed down on my uh, mentorship because I didn't know there were so many. I, I say COVID produced a lot of course sellers. You know, people who there are people who may take a course and then regurgitate the information. Now they got a course and two fifty, and then one they students. And not like, that. like somebody did you, and, I, and this is something I noticed. This is another conversation I ever had with him. And I have I knew this because I knew the information that he that he gave me. And the next thing you know, I see this individual verbatim have this information. I'm just like, hold up. And I go back and look at what I looked at. I'm like, hold up, that's his. Free. And it's sad. Oh, for free. Right. Free stuff. And this person is selling. Yeah. Verbatim. Yeah. I slow so like I said, I slowed down on it. One, because I didn't want to be another just person selling something. Mm -hmm. uh, but two, because I realized I might have been leading people into a fire because everybody's not built like me to handle this industry. Okay. And so there are people, and I make sure to tell them this is not easy. So now I before we start, this is not easy. Before we start. You need to understand this now. If you want to pay me for my time, that's what you're paying for. Okay. The info and how I, how I relay the information. Everybody can't relay information the same way. Right. So you pay me for my time. You pay me for how I relay this information. Your success <clears throat> is not on me because it takes it takes things outside of the steps to okay. be successful. Right. The steps get you started. Okay. What makes you successful? And then you got you got different people who offer services to help you. Mm -hmm. But at, at some point, you have to be able to know it. Even if you outsource it, you have to be able to know it yourself. Right. Uh, so I think people get in, they see, and somebody's told me I make it look easy. I don't post everything that goes on, which I'll start and I'll talk about in the videos because I think people think, oh, the trucks never break down or right. nothing goes wrong. Right. That's not the case. We just had a tire situation today. Okay. I'm just built to handle it quick. Right. Everybody's not. People panic. People get under pressure. People can't uh, lead. And so I don't even think twice about posting this stuff. It's just tire down. Let's get any tire. I don't think like, hey, this is the reality of trucking. Right. This is the reality of trucking. And so that's why I had to slow down on uh, just saying this is how you get in. I had to right. start also telling this is how you stay in. And if you're not built mm. for it, then maybe you shouldn't jump in. Mm. That, that was nice. Right there. So this, don't, this is how you stay in. Yeah. Don't pay me right. until you know that this is the risk. I don't want I don't want you to pay me. There is somebody out there uh, charging a lot, not even telling the people that they can't get a truck without having a CDL or some type of right. financial history. So people paying thousands for this course, go try to get a truck. Right. And they can't. Oh, well, we left that part out. Right. Because they're they selling it. Oh, yeah, you can have a truck. Come and get, get it without a CDL. Mm -hmm. Don't even worry about it. Do it from your living room. You don't have to yeah. what? For real? Yes. Yeah. Come on down here. Give me this. $2,000, I'm going to give you a wolf smile. Right. The wolf smile, people, right? Um, you know. And I, and I I hate to say it because there Wait, are people. Uh, yeah, say it. Come on. Got this on five it's because we got to protect, right? And that's why. So my YouTube channel is it's free information. Right. Like when, And like I say, I gave a lot of time away. So my time is more valuable. And that's something you got to understand. When people charge you for their time, there are a thousand other things that I could be doing True. that could generate me much more money right so if you need my insight my information on what you see mm -hmm. you want to get to this level and you want to understand how to run it at this level then that's right. me i'm not pushing you to do it but if you want to do it this is the cost right there are a lot of people who are not telling the real and leading people down uh just a dark hole of uncertainty True. and leaving stuff out now you gotta pay me and then you gotta subscribe right and there's some and, and that's not everybody there are some people offer really good information so you just got to vet them out. But uh, that's just my take on it. All this information is free somewhere. Everybody's not a researcher. So right. if you're not, then it may be uh, beneficial to find a mentor in whatever the field is. Find a mentor, someone who can get you there, but make sure they're not just somebody who's trying to get your money. True, true. You know what? And I, and I, I look at it this way right here. Um, I think if people really took the time to kind of look at the people who are doing it, you know what I'm saying? It probably would make a little more sense. If, if I can see, you know what I'm saying, 
uh, a J Ham out here doing this thing. I can see a Pro Hall TV out here doing this thing. Yeah, I can see a, a J Rich out here doing this yeah, thing, yeah. right? You know, okay, and this these are no shameless plugs. This is just re- this is just reality, right? Mm-hmm. If I can see them doing this, right, versus just talking about doing it, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's, it's a no brainer mm-hmm. because I'm actually seeing the process and the results from it, but I'm just hearing. From somebody who's telling me, oh, yeah, no, I had 20 people do this and I snap a picture with them standing in front of a truck. But then I see nothing else after that. I don't see them doing anything with those trucks. I mean, if you're going to snap a picture with the people, hey, they just got three trucks, snap a picture. OK, everybody can get a truck. Man. You can get a truck. You pay whatever you get a truck. I can go see it and take about 12, 13 grand and go get a truck and go take a picture in front of it and say, yeah, look what I'm doing. Right. Mm-hmm. That's too easy to do. Okay, and people are selling this. You know what I'm saying? And some people are even going all the way to just having them take pictures in front of trucks. Me, they need me to dealership. Mm. Now I'm gonna tell you this was over oh, in Atlanta. Atlanta. Yes, oh. in Atlanta. Oh wow. Because I'm there all day. This goes on in Atlanta. They would have people meet them at the dealership. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because if I pay you, hey, I'm gonna pay you about five hundred dollars. Probably not even that much. I'm gonna pay you about this much right here. I need you to just come stand in front of this truck. We're gonna take a picture. You know what I'm saying? And say bam, bam, bam. And this happens consistently right but if the person on instagram don't know that right and so now can pay me because i'm producing other trucking companies but are you really and so there are a few people who i would like to say uh has helped me okay and so that one being uh truck estates truck estates shout out truck Definitely. estates Definitely. Uh, and me i'm super i'm super iffy about people so how open he was to me i was kind of like i was cool and then i was like i don't know right. but he's helped, helped me a lot and it's just off the rip and i i could research anything but i know if i need dot information right is it he gonna help me uh blue collar ceo help me okay blue and collar. he got right out there in Alpharetta. and so those are some of the guys who uh like i know they they got the info and they're not trying to bust heads. Sometimes it may be free, depending right. if they have a conference. You know, True. like I said, people's time is valuable. So Definitely. I don't Definitely. I don't mind uh when you're when you are doing it though. You're right. doing it. Like you said, I see Marcus, that's blue collar. I see him doing it. Right. I see Trucker States posting all this free DLT information. Right. But when I when I can't see you doing, it, I just see people, like you say, taking pictures and things like that. Uh the 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 simple-minded person will go for it, and no disrespect to anybody, but the simple-minded person will see it and say, "I want that result," and paying this amount is going to get it. But right. I've had a lot of people come from there. When when my mentorship was two hundred, the the people who were under it said, "This is not high enough. Like you're not charging enough." Right. I, I told you that. Yeah, okay. and so me, I was like, well, "What you mean? <laughs> That's a lot of money." Right. And like, but you're giving way too right. much for uh for two hundred. But they had come from places where they paid fifteen hundred, two thousand, right. you know, upwards of a thousand dollars or more, and they would say, "Man, I got more out of this hour with you than I did from having this three months here, right. or four months there." Um, and I, I think it's just a play on people's emotions to want to be wealthy, want to be financially right. stable, want to build a legacy. Let right. me play on that emotion and tell them this is going to get them there, but sustainment. Mm. That's the word they gotta understand. How do I sustain? Right. And if somebody's trying to charge you to sustain or trying to give you half the loaf of bread, but then here a dangling carrot, you gotta right. come back for more. Right. Give me five hundred more for this or that. I think that's that's not integrity. And if you really winning in the business, are you really having to charge that mm. much? True. True. And and, and that's a, that's definitely who you are. What's your thoughts, Ron? Yeah, absolutely. Like you said. You know, people are out here, out here wanting to make it here. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> there are ways to check companies out here. If you want to check out any trucking company, visit Safers. 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 Right. Something. Gov. It'll tell you how many trucks they got. Two different ways you can do it. Things um, like that. Do it by their name. You, you don't say or the MC number or the DOT number. Yeah. Right? The block so, on top. It's just they put the names in and they give you a run of what it is. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, some people true. some people don't update it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the right don't. way. No, 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 because you know, when you do your biannual, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? 
that's what you're updating. Yeah. You're updating that. So you you can choose either to add trucks or not add trucks mm. to it. So you can say, and most people, you can look. Some people who have big fleets and they really have the trucks, mm -hmm. they're the only going to say like two because that's one of the things they just don't care to update. Oh, you know what I'm okay. saying? So they won't. So it might just say two, but it really have about 15 trucks. But it's your choice if you want to update that information. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that is how that works. So that's what like you that. had to, to if you have an audit. Right. What's that? If you have an audit, they're going to see that. No, they'll see it, but it's, yeah, I can only know by like my audit. You know what I'm saying? Um, and what what they looked at and oh, I yeah, sometimes, mine, every truck. So, sometimes <laughs> it's different um you know i guess the different investigators you know yeah saying? the ones that chill. do it you know what i'm saying some of them chill some of them like okay they look at you and see kind of like, uh, you kind of got it together right somewhere. right and that's, that's probably what happened my that's what my, mine was too. <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying he was like uh, you know and he, he explained to me he said listen it's one of these things it's a pass or fail thing mm -hmm. and then you know you get a 73.5 this is a yeah, yeah go or no go yeah, you know what I'm saying, which is good. You know what I'm saying, which is good. It's like that because they let you know. And he, and he explained to me. He said, "Listen, Brian, it's more of a we're looking at things from a safety standpoint. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, we want to make sure you're operating safe. You yeah. know what I'm saying. So I stayed in contact with this guy. You know what I'm saying because when he when he hit me up, he said, you know, he said, hey, um, hey, you, you know, when could you have everything together? You know what I'm saying. He gave me the portal that you know he had stuff, mm -hmm. loads of stuff in the portal and stuff like that. And I was like, hey, uh, give me two weeks. I just threw it out there. He said, okay. He said, no problem. He said, you just get everything loaded in by two weeks. You know what I'm saying? Call me um, anytime you need to send me a text. Mm -hmm. And so for the whole two weeks, I'm sitting there every day. I'm talking to him. Every day. I'm like, hey, what is right here? What is it? You know, when I was saying that, I was just asking questions. Yeah. Because I knew it was going to help people out as far as education. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I told you how I do with the DOT offices. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll be like, hey, can you? Hey, let's talk about it. You got time? You know what I'm saying? I ask different questions. That's going to help people. In fact, like I said, I'm going to have a DOT officer come in here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? In two weeks. So, which is a great thing. Yeah. You know, so all the questions that I have and all the questions that people have, you know what I'm saying? I think it's good to get it out of a horse's mouth. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we know exactly. Do you have to have a chain on on the container? No, you don't have to have a chain on the mm -hmm. container. You only need four straps. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it says right there yeah. in their regulation, their books. You know what I'm saying? And they re they reiterate, you know, there does not need to be any chains on the containers. Mm -hmm. It's a great safety practice, but as long as you have, you know what I'm saying, a strap every 10 feet, that's what we look for. Right. It's, it's a safety thing. It's a, it's a safety thing. It's easier. Yeah. I, I felt. Oh, you did? Yeah, I thought the chain was easier. Right. But I asked that question on one of my earlier YouTube videos. Uh -huh. Like, hey, what is it? Do you right. need to have chains? Do you need to have straps? That was the first to say, I, don't, I didn't know it all. I don't right. know it all. If I don't know, I'm gonna figure it out though. You know what I mean? Uh, but you know, that's this is the life where we're going back to. This is the life where we live in. And right. People, uh, some people want to give it. Some people, you know, hang dangling cares. It is what it is. Um, but we can do our part and continue right. to, you know, continue to do what we do. So, so, so what is business now to you? As you see, you know, you know, I think you're gonna be the next Amazon. You know what I'm saying? Because one, I'm just seeing your truck. Every time I see your truck that color, I'm like, <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm I've watched you. You know what I'm saying? From the, you know, like literally from, from here, baby, yes. you know, to now, know man. And it's just like, dude, it's like this dude. He just keeps on. He keeps on. Mm -hmm. He keeps on. The day you flew down, I picked you up and drove you to yeah. that one truck one day. And um, and now you're coming down here to, to um, get a, pick up a trailer, and yeah. it's like, man, this is amazing mm -hmm. that your company has grown so much even through this pandemic. Yeah. So I was telling Rome on the way here, and we always get into deep conversations. I said a lot of people are just running trucks and not running a company. I said I want to compete with a big guy. So how long, however long that takes, my operation can be there with them. So not necessarily size of the fleet, but my operation. So what what do I need to do to be more like them on the positive side? So I hear a lot of negatives about mega carriers, but I'm driven to not just be another carrier that's going to hire you and sell you your money. You know what I mean? We got payroll. Now we're looking into benefits and that's just an, one more step. Right. You know, we uh, workers comp, things like that. So I don't want to, it's not about check. I take from my profit to pay for other things to make the company more attractive. Oh, say that. We're gonna say that piece right there. We're gonna take time. from my profit to pay for other things to make the company, company. more attractive. Right. And that's what people fail to do. Mm -hmm. They'll take that and they'll do something totally different with mm -hmm. it, and then have an issue within their company. Mm -hmm. They can't take care of their equipment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. 
I don't I don't spend money myself. It's all stays in the company. Um, I want to be more. I want to, like I said, people. I, I can't wait to get on with FedEx. I want people saying I can't wait to get on with with Pro Hall. Mm -hmm. I mean, how you get on with Pro Hall? How they right. treat you there? Right. I want my drivers to have good experiences. All of my drivers are. Uh, they they don't mind. They call me for no reason. You know, most time you don't want to call the boss. They call me, hey boss. I know I'm on my reset. I'm just checking in, man. Right. I'm about to grab a couple of beers, something like that. Like, all right, enjoy it. I'm gonna shoot you twenty dollars. Take a shot on me. Okay. You know, that's how I, that's how I operate. I want it to be a good experience. Um, I w and that's what I mean when I want to compete with these with these big guys. I want to be right. a company where people want to come to. <laughs> Because we already know driver retention is tough. So how am I different from anybody else just posting we're hiring? Right. Well, we're hiring. You get this type of relationship from the boss. You get these type of benefits. Mm -hmm. um, my personality, you know what I mean? And so being a, a leader and a CEO, and you know, being a leader in the military, you got to have a level of uh, emotional intelligence and how to deal with different people different ways. Right. And I think that's one of my gifts with, with being able to have employees. Is I understand I got to talk to him different than I talk to him. Right. Our conversations aren't the same. Aren't the, same right. the way I talk, my tone is different because this guy needs a little bit more stern talk, right. still respectful and still cool. But I need you to do this. Right. Whereas this person may be more like, all right, yeah, you good. You handle your business. And so just understand that part as well um, with growth, knowing and learning more. Different people require a different you. Right. And that, that's so great you say that because people are individuals. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I know there's a quote, and I, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't know the John C. Maxwell or whatever, or whoever it was, but the quote was, um, is it fair to treat unequals equal? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's one of those one of those answers that, I mean, there's no right or wrong answer in it, but it's just whatever and how you lead. Yeah. You know, it kind of speaks to what you said. You know, everybody's an individual. So if I come at everybody the same exact way, I'm going to miss something. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to reach somebody. Even with the Excellence Foundation, every one of those kids, you can't come at them the exact same way. Sure, there are drills mm -hmm. to do. Everybody's doing the same thing, but then there's things you're looking at that wow. they're not doing. And you take them, say, hey, come here for a minute. Let me, you know, it now it becomes an individual thing. Right. And so with the same way you kind of speak about it, it's your drivers, right? right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wrong what you got on that? Yeah. Um, you know, emotional intelligence. Okay. You know, being a great leader. Knowing how to treat certain people based on that person's decisions. Um, and, you know, being an investor in Pro Hall and just seeing how he runs the business, one of the great things I think he does is he works a lot of incentives and uh -huh. things that he does for the drivers. Okay. You know, so you work this hard, you get compensated for it. So, once again, individual base, right? Mm -hmm. Because everybody can't give everybody the same thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Incentivize, right? So, even as an pro athlete, you know, hey, you get if you get three hours for carry, then you're going to get this right here. Mm -hmm. If you get X amount of first downs, you're going to get this right here. Right. It's all an individual thing based off the strength of that individual. Right. Mm. Um, so, I mean, it's been a, a great thing. And one thing I want for my drivers, too, I tell them when you come to Pro Hall, you're not just getting a job. You're about to get free mentorship. I tell them everything. Uh -oh. it's free? Free mentorship. No. I want them all to get their own truck. If they want their own company, cool. You're not right. going to be my competitor because <laughs> right. you're not me. You can't duplicate me. The best bet is to do it over to the team. Same you know, you know what I mean? That's what kills a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They are scared that somebody that works for them is going to be that competition. Mm -hmm. And they don't have as much confidence in themselves to understand that they are the blueprint. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You right. are your blueprint. Yeah. Nobody can do it. Mm -hmm. And Man. the thing is, I ain't going to let them fail. So they, and I tell them, get your truck. If you want to start a company, I'll show you how. If you want to understand how things work, how we negotiate, I'll show you how. But most of them, they're like, well, I, I just want to be here. Like, we like you as a person. Right. And so it's open to them. But um, I never want to hold anybody back from leveling up mm -hmm. for themselves. Hope, I mean, if you do go and be, you're not going to, it's so much freight out here. You're not going to be my direct competitor. Right. You know what I mean? I want you to be successful and provide for your family. And I want you to look back and say, Jerron, taught me this he gave me a job okay. taught me this and i'm a multi-millionaire off of it mm. yeah and that should be that yeah that like I, I need we need a good relationship right. i don't want to have a salty relationship like uh, behind that it should given that somebody's passing you should be a, a proud moment right when the student passes you and you should be you know what I'm saying? Because point, if we look at it from a standpoint you know i say it to my own friends or people that are anybody i'm dealing with like i want you 
you know what I'm saying, to win more mm-hmm. so than me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if we go with our people that work for us, our employees, you say, listen, man, I, don't, I, 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 need, I need you to win. I, mm-hmm. I, I want you to own five companies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to pour that much into you. You know what I'm saying? Because one, I'm secure in myself and I know nobody can do what I do. Mm-hmm. You know nobody can do what you do. You know what I'm saying? Right. So at that point, they realize and appreciate that you believe in them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's all people want. So now when it comes to attrition, you know what I'm saying? It's not affecting them much because mm-hmm. we know keeping drivers is a hard thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because um, finding the right driver, everybody says the same thing, right? Oh, I'm ready to work. I want to work. I want to be over the road. I want to make it happen. Clean record, right? They get in there, they're doing the job, they get one or two checks. Now oh, I need to be home. I need to be just right here. Mm-hmm. Cause really in their mind, hey man, I just need to get a job to get this much money. Mm-hmm. And once they get that much money, then they're gone. And you thinking everything is good. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh man, Joe is rolling, no complaints. Here it comes. Mm-hmm. Have you ever experienced that? No, because here's how I come back to that. We, we go a week in the hole. And so Ooh, okay, okay. In, in the document they signed a policy and procedures, shout out to Truck States. Uh it states that if you do not give a two weeks notice, you forfeit part or all of your last check. So you're gonna let me know and give so me that's time. operating like the big boys. That's operating like the big boys. Yeah, that's what the big boys do. That's what most businesses do. And I, I told my boy today he's having a trouble with a driver. Uh, I said you're hiring somebody who's looking for a jet a check, not right. somebody who's looking for a job. Right. You hiring somebody who just need that next come up. But you can't get that come up off me, right? Um, and I and and I can tell them that we I'll give them in advance a few hundred that week right. for them to buy food and stuff on the road. But yeah. you're not getting the week's loads on Friday, right? You get that next Friday, right? And then you owe me. So as long as I owe you something, I got leverage. Right. So it's a business tip for people who are gonna have drivers or any type of employees. Mm-hmm. As long as you owe them something, you got leverage. Now right. I don't put my two weeks in, or you sign here that you forfeit part or half of it or right. all of the check. You know what right. I mean? Because now it goes into rehiring. It's kind of like when you get out of an apartment where we got releasing things. Right. We need to replace you. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's you're not gonna walk out on me. You're not gonna leave me hanging right. and I don't have some type of leverage. I think I think that that might have been one of the great challenges you've seen so far. Mm-hmm. What you just said, I think a lot of people might have been more easy to implement. Yeah, I think it's very smart probably to do it like that. You know because one, a lot of those things happen. You got some room? Yeah, you know, oh, you got to implement those policies and procedures that are going to lower your risk. Yeah. So, um, you know, as a trucker, you're going to get risk and drivers and drivers' retention. So, you put right. policies and procedures to lower that risk. All right. You know, because in that, in that document, it's everything from accidents. Right. Who's responsible? Do you have a sign that if they hit a curb and pop a tire, that they're responsible? Or if they rope up against them, mm. they're responsible. Because you can't just say, you're going to pay me for that. Right. Make me. And if if the cost is more than my last check, why do I care anyways? I'm just I'm sure. still leave. Uh, so, uh, and we got we got good systems for that. And so there's a system for everything. You have to have a and Chad from Wick Harper on Instagram. Mm-hmm. He calls it CYA. Cover okay. your ass. You know what <laughs> I mean? Hey, and I let you guys know but this is nothing uh, against you. This is to cover us. Because right. if we pay you now, you quit Friday. At, Right after you got paid and leave my truck in Maryland, mm. well, who's out? But if you don't, and I got to buy a plane ticket and you a week in hold, well, your check yeah. just went to go and get the get truck. Nothing, right? Yeah, you know you what I mean? Sign that. You it's time. So right. uh, I haven't I haven't had an issue with people just getting a check. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you really have to bring people in and talk to them. Mm-hmm. Some people are so used to looking at some paperwork and sitting in the uh, MVR and they're thinking, oh, they're good to go clean record. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Talk to the person. Yeah. Bring the person in and talk to them. If you know the phone call thing, it's okay, man. But I think when it comes to drivers, mm-hmm. I think you need to, to talk to the driver. You need to sit down with them and talk to them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Go somewhere, go eat lunch and talk to them. And really kind of ask some in depth things. You know what I'm saying? So you can kind of understand their way of thinking because that's probably what they're gonna do to you. Um, I got um Takisa Jackson. She got she got something. Could you read that for me there? If you can those kind of small there. Wait, my little class. <laughs> but now, nah, you know, because I want people to know their thoughts. So, you know, we're really thinking about it. What's your thoughts about that? Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, you see it too. So when I, and that's a good, that's a good point. When I was on the road, I would work out in a truck stop parking lot. Okay, but um, I think a way to maybe help with that 
Chakisa is to give those memberships like uh, Planet Fitness. Right. So maybe look, we'll give you, we'll pay for your Planet Fitness membership. That's something good that I hadn't thought about. Um, right. So I do like that. That is overlooked, and you see it, and you see it with drive-in drivers more right. than flatbed. Right. These guys be obese. You see, you see the women with a little more curves than they're supposed to have, and the guys, and with, guys the, with two. Yeah, curves. it looks like it hurt to walk. Right. Uh, so yeah, I think that 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 is a good uh, a good point. But I think to have that have some right. type of we're gonna give you a membership. Right. Well, maybe not LA Fitness. That's a good one. <laughs> but we could do play. <laughs> but, but, I, but I will tell everybody. Right here. Um, get a membership for Planet Fitness in one of those places in your company name, of course. So mm-hmm. now it's a, it's a write off. And what you do is you add your um, drivers and family members, and they will let you do it. And so now you just provided health welfare for your drivers. Mm-hmm. So there's just something that anybody's in the trucking industry, if you want to think about doing, it's a smart thing to do. Yeah. Okay. They yeah, support they support that. They support it. You know. So 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 when you look at um when you look at 2021, mm-hmm. 2020 was good for you. Yeah. As I can see, because you just kept adding trucks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you add your truck. Um what what are you looking to do? Or expand or continue to grow in 2021 and beyond right now just just knowing more uh, parts of the industry so like i said there's still areas that i haven't tapped into yet so um government work seeing how it is everybody talks about contracts uh different type of contracts are some of them worth it are are they all are they not directs right and we got some directs uh but they're not contracts because we go everywhere so once we're out we're out but uh you know some of those different areas um certifications that we make and get and i want to look into brokering more so to cover our own fleet right you know what i mean so now as a broker i'm more attracted when i say we got six trucks that we can put on it right as opposed to a broker with no i gotta start straight from zero so right. um really tapping into more areas of the industry of course continuing to grow and building up the proper driver retention system mm. and and really that's the pain point Right. And that's the stress uh, stress factor. I had a guy go down for the clearinghouse. Okay. I had to take him off the road, and that was I was caught off guard because it was instant. We did the mm. query, and it was like, all right, you got to get off the road until you get it situated. He got it situated, but um, right. we couldn't find anybody like that just could get right into the truck. Right, and you go in these posts, and everybody saying they want a job, but they don't really. They don't. They, don't. they, they don't. want to talk about it. But, um, right, really building up that pipeline of drivers. Like I said, people saying I want to get on with Pro Hall. Right. And, and, and that's good. That's what just needs to happen. You know what I'm saying? Do you have a number in your mind? Because I would never ask you how many trucks you have. Because it's, probably, it's never good to ask those questions like mm-hmm. that. But do you have a number in mind of where you want to see your fleet? And then I have another question about brokers, but um, that you want to go. Like a cap? Yeah. No, there's no cap on it. We would just need to make sure that we have the team to handle it okay because uh multiple trucks with no team is you might as well have you know a few trucks right. turn some of them in they can't all get the right attention true um so there's no cap we would just gauge okay at 10 how are me and one other person handling them how are me and my girl gonna you know how are we dispatching did we true. fall off at 10 do we need to bring in help right you know so we'll gauge like that i track everything all numbers Mm-hmm. And so also kind of just knowing we want to automate what areas we know we're going to go to, okay. our field, what time of the year. Right. And although it's always changing, it's good to have those numbers to right. create your own little Google search of what what was it like when we went to Nevada in October last year? You okay. know what I mean? Things like that. Um, going back and looking at that. But really, really just being better and, and like I said, tapping into more right. areas, but no, nah, no cap on the amount of trucks. Okay. And so you need to be like the big boy. Like one thing I did you know, the big bulls is that even as a small person, you don't say what I did. Or um, the big bulls, what they do is, is what I've seen. Um, they of course they have their, their company, and then of course on the side of them they have their brokerage. Mm-hmm. So that's what allows them to book loads, be able to take loads for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, but in house, they, they have to separate it because one, they don't, you know, FMC they don't like you to do carrying and brokering under the same DOT. Okay. You know what I'm saying? 
So they'll do that. That's why they be hunting all these people. They have a broker side of them, then they have the carrier side of them. Mm-hmm. That's why they're able to dispatch, you know, yeah, broker their own all the time. Time. And So that's what they do. And so as um, as pro continues to climb that ladder, and you talk about brokers, that's definitely a smart thing to do. Mm-hmm. You know to do that because now it makes you the player of the game now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying not just a player in the game. You know what I'm right. And I'm um, just really understanding the relationships with the direction with the yeah. Because a lot of people do it anyway. They don't realize it. When you when you go into places and you're shaking hands, you're talking to the shipping manager and stuff like that, you're getting those contacts, like really you you right then you're really becoming a broker yeah, right. because you're taking the broker out of the picture. Right. You know, and um and so once we kind of learn that, it's kind of like, okay, so all I have to do is go play pay a bond and I'm a, I'm a broker. Mm-hmm. And that's all you have to do. It's that simple. People will sell these. Well, again, yeah. oh, we got the broker courses and broker courses. Man. And you're like, uh, I wish somebody would go buy that broker course mm-hmm. because, one, you don't need to. You know what I'm saying? If you knew what it took just to become a broker, well, they sell all this other crap because, of course, they want to make it look like it's a bundle and I'm giving you something. Yeah. You give me $3,000, I'm going to make you a broker. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Talk to me. People would, would rather overpay or microwave success or, or microwave product and do the research and really understand it. Because in research, you find things that you may not get out of a course or anything. And that's on the person for not doing their research. You know what I mean? If you get beat, you get beat. And hope it works for you. But uh, you're trying to take a shortcut. We just had a conversation with our friend David before we came here on people. He had a buddy who was throwing money at all types of courses like right. credit and real estate mm-hmm. and this and that. He said, bro, you're spending all the money that you can use to invest. So you're trying to just microwave it. Instead, you're trying to skip the process of learning it, of really learning it and going into doing your own research and figuring right. things out for yourself. But uh, like what you said, yeah, you can just go get the bond and right. do your thing. And uh, I got some info from Marcus again, that's Blue Collar CEO. He said he's been in the industry for like 14 years, uh, right. 20 plus trucks ran a big fleet at uh, a point in time. He told me that a lot of the shipping managers don't really want to deal with brokers. They'd rather deal with the carrier. 100%. Yeah, they'd rather deal with the carrier. Um, but like you said, once you could broker out of the freight, that's another stream of income. Right. So I listened to him. I was like, I got you. Yeah. But I'm going to still right. go uh, tap in and, and at least see. Right. I need to see. Right. And if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. But right. I've seen it. You know, and, and, and like I said, it's good because it was, from the viewpoint you just said, that's the way I see it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sure, I I did that piece. I can talk to people all day. That's for me directly. Mm-hmm. But if I'm a broker, also, you know what I'm saying? There's another stream. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's really about creating more streams. You know what I'm saying? And, and just having that hunger. And so, but that insight for people who are willing to give that information out and not sell it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying anything's wrong with selling it. I'm, yeah. I'm really not. So I'm not saying it from that standpoint. But there are people out here just honest and be like, hey, no, you know what I'm saying? A guy um two weeks ago just did it. You know, he was he got a truck and um he was talking about hey, I'm going to need somebody's authority. So he had gotten the truck and he had insurance. I'm just like, uh, well, you know you got the hardest part done, right? Mm-hmm. The insurance. I say if you're going to need somebody's authority, then you gotta go with their insurance. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's the law, you know. And he was like, huh? I said, okay. And I was on the road um, heading to Carolina. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, just call me. I said, and I'm, I'm going to mm-hmm. tell you to log on the FMCSA website, and I'm going to talk you through it. I said, and you're going to get your DOT number tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I just know the screens by heart for whatever reason. You know what I'm yeah. So he was clicking on, I said, okay, now click this right here. All right, here. I said, read that. But I'll make him read it so he can understand what he was doing. You know what I'm saying? You know, we were done like 25 minutes. He had his DOT number. He said, okay, well, what's next? I said, well, your phone's going to blow up. Yeah, your yeah, email's yeah. going to get inundated. That's what's about to happen. I said, in about 12 days, I said, you're going to get your MC number. But understand, the MC number is not going to be active. Mm-hmm. I said, there's a few things that you're going to do in order to activate it. But, hey, you already got the insurance. So that was the hardest part. You know what I'm saying? Just get your drug assortium, you know what I'm saying, straight. And um, the uh, UCFR and all that stuff right there so you can be ready to go. And he said, man, you know what, dude? This place was going to charge me eight hundred and fifty dollars to do this. Mm-hmm. I say, yep, and you just paid three hundred. Mm-hmm. End of the day, 
It's steps. You know what I'm saying? It's literally just steps. You know, um, there are some people who will pay for like one on one, like phone calls, like time like that. Right. And I, I'll let them know, like, you know, have an idea of what you're asking, but everything should be in the book. We'll get on the call and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's on this page. <laughs> right. like, oh, it was there. I'm like, why'd you buy the book if you didn't read it? And then you paid me to for the <laughs> Zoom call. It's like, uh, but it's literally just steps and, right. you know, making it accessible. And so on, on YouTube, if you could piece it together on Google, mm-hmm. cool. Right. If you do want to buy anything to make it easier, mm-hmm. also cool. But just make sure you're not getting ripped off. So you got to feel who's doing what. Is this right. is the information they're giving you going to somehow make your company different? than some other company, most likely not, because everybody right. has to do the same steps to do to get into the industry. Um, but research and like I say, people want to microwave mm-hmm. the success. My coach used to say that. And people are on a sugar high of what they think it'll be as opposed to what it's really going to be. So then when they get slapped in the face with the reality of trucking, and that's where mentorship may come into in being worth it by getting these real life experiences right. from people who are in it to be able to talk to them now. Uh, that's what's worth it to be able to talk to somebody because I could tell you the exact same thing that I wrote in the book, you know what I mean? But sure. now you can get my stories, you can get the real behind it. Cause like we say, it's not easy at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but more power to the people out there ripping, ripping others off. <laughs> Straight up. So if you had to give advice to someone, you know what I'm saying? just advice, okay? Um, getting into the industry that you're in, the transportation industry, mm-hmm. Can, are they, can they expect to make a bunch of money in their first year? No. Thank you. Things Say it one more time. Thing, no, not at all. <laughs> That's when things are the most expensive. Right. And you, especially if you're in an operation by yourself under your own MC, you you're got that 90 days where brokers may not want to work with you. You don't know where to go yet. You don't know how to negotiate yet. Your insurance is the highest as it's going to ever be. Don't file any claims on it. And so that's that's the year I tell people to look for experiences, save as much as you can, focus on what's what's going out. Right. You know what I mean? What's coming in it look big, but you got 60 percent, 70 percent that going out if you pay attention. So that's not the year to make the big amount of money. That's the year to learn. Right. So now the next year you come around, you can be a little bit better for this morning, right? a little bit better. And, and then next year, even better. Now your insurance is getting lower. You're starting to understand your rhythm. Mm-hmm. You understand where to go, what to expect, maintenance, things like that. Um, and one truck is not going to do it. One truck can help you sustain your lifestyle, right. but one truck isn't going to make you rich by mm-hmm. any means. And so don't let people uh, make you feel like it will, because then you get in and you realize, oh, well, right. that 20000 really gets reduced to Right. eight or nine and that's that before taxes or whatever you know depending on how that month goes right so they got to understand the expenses behind True. everything because people tell you you can make twenty thousand a month and their lifestyle yeah and they're say that something that's different lifestyle you know what I'm saying That's not what getting into the business should be for, right? right? You building something, and you got to think about longevity, not right now, right. not this year. If I get in today, this is the year to learn and to be able to maybe put myself in a position to to get another truck next year or right. whatever the timeline is. I can't tell you the timeline. Somebody right. asked me today, how long will it take me to get a truck? I was like, this <laughs> depends on your finances. Right. Um, but every day is a learning experience. And okay. I, my first day running the semis, four semis, was the hardest day in trucking I ever had. Mm-hmm. You know, so have, having more people calling and, hey, a tire of this, hey, this lights out, hey, right. the shipper's not loading me, hey, I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> and that day I was like, okay, these are some of the things that people who say they want multiple trucks mm-hmm. haven't experienced yet. Right. Can you really handle it? Right. You know, and you, Hopefully you can. Hopefully you're in deep enough to where you're like, all right, I know how to handle this. But uh, a lot of people can't. Right. And that's when it comes crumbling down. True. Because they only focus on what the truck can make. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, the truck can make this. Yeah. It really can. But do you know what else? 
constantly happening. Mm-hmm. And your driver be this. Yeah. Does the driver have anything going on in their life? You know what I'm saying? You know, and it's those things that and, and go through. We need to, you know, if, if anybody can get trucks, and I say yeah. that all the time, anybody can get a truck. But if we spend a little more energy and time into selecting drivers, you know what I'm saying, and treating drivers well so that they want to go, work, you know what I'm saying, then that driver is going to stay there and that truck can make money. The only thing you need to worry about is the maintenance of it at mm-hmm. that point. But when you got to worry about maintenance and driver, you can be out of business just like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because if they want to jump ship because they can get another nickel over here, you know, well, I'm jumping ship and now your truck is stuck. Yeah. You know, and that's what you're going to happen. You know what I, what I tell my guy, let me know. If you see something, right. <laughs> something that's shiny, let me know what it is right. before it so I can see if we, if they lying or if we could do something to make right. it, uh, you know, make it better to, to keep you here. Um, but like you say, you know, making sure that the operation and that you're treating these guys right is important. So you see so many ego problems. I'm your boss. Mm. I'm the boss. I'm the boss. And I really don't like which I mean, employee is fine and, and saying it, but I don't I call my drivers my team, like my team. Right. Like this member of my team. Like don't talk to them like that. Right. You know what I mean? Because um, they are a part of the team. Yeah. They, with no driver, there's no truck in the country. No, that that'll be out. It'll be gone faster than it started. So you gotta understand these people are the ones out on the road. You gotta treat them with some some respect. You know what I mean? They're the ones making your business go around. True. You know what I mean? Uh, so I, I see a lot of ego and people like man, my driver won't. People try to short change the driver like like they are just helping with Raycons or something. Right. As opposed to like this is the person who's actually making me the money. You know, making the truck the money, making the company the money. So it's, it's kind of sad that they look at drivers as just drivers, right? And I, and so I I build my drivers up like y'all my team, right? So act as so, and that gives them a sense of pride in the company. So you gave me this shirt, Pro Hall shirt. Mm-hmm. I've never bought any Pro Hall gear, right? Never, yeah, you never, shouldn't. not once. You know who else brought me some gear? Okay. My driver brought. He pulled up on me. I met him to give him some tarts with Pro Hall. Uniform on, right? Uh, D Town brought hat, mm-hmm. mask, shirt, right. collar shirt. My other driver Pablo shirt. He pulled up with a hoodie. Driver Martin came with a hoodie with Pro Hall TV on the side. I'm like, y'all right. boys got gear I don't have, right? But they proud to represent the brand. Yeah, yeah. that's a great thing. Do got even in the industry, right? Like people are they're printed up and get it done for them. You know what I'm saying? Because one, they want to represent their brand, mm-hmm. and so to or your drivers to want to represent, you know, saying your company, your brand, and you, it says everything about you and what yeah. you stand for, man. Mm-hmm. And like, that's like the ultimate compliment, I will yeah. tell you, man. And um, and like I said, that's one of the things that, that attracted me to you because I felt you were genuine. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? We talk about this all the time, but you know, you're a genuine individual, you care, you'll, you'll jump in your car and do a video, say, hey, man, I just came in the car to do a video because, mm-hmm. you know, it's better acoustics in here for whatever reason today, yeah, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. And get the information on. And so, but you're genuinely coming from the heart with that stuff, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because you want people to be better, you know what I'm saying? Sure. You know, so um, pretty much we're probably closing this thing right here. What what advice, I'm going to quote with you also, um, bro, but what advice would you give that aspiring athlete, you know what I'm saying, who either made to the collegiate level and um, they – they, they're going through the collegiate process and they're probably not going to make it to the league mm-hmm. or the individuals who made it to the league and they're about to come out of the league and, you know, something has to happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? What is a mindset that you that you would advise them to have? Right. Um, attack it with the same work ethic that got you to where you are in athletics. Because whatever level you're on, um, maybe not high school, but if you make it to college, then you have some level of skill, some level of work ethic, especially if you make it to the league. So attack life with that same work ethic and understand that we're not just athletes. We're higher performing individuals who just happen to be in athletics. So now whatever you touch, perform highly at it and be in and hit that same level of, of achievement that you uh, reached in athletics. But in whatever field it is, you're a high performing individual. Right. Not just an athlete. So do that. Right. 
Yeah. So whatever it is. So they have a do something. Right. It's just game planning. Um when I know the plays, the game is a little easier. Right. So I think people get caught up because you don't want to learn more, never stop right. learning, and that'll allow you to game plan. Right. And right. and trucking, if we know that self driving trucks come in whatever amount of time, which I got I got some information on that that yeah. don't seem like it'll be something to worry about right now. But if you know when it starts getting closer, then how right. do you game plan for it? Right. Um, so in any in, in the industry, and I say this about Rome, he's probably one of my only friends who took his degree, mm-hmm. and got his master's, and, and climbed the ladder right. of the career. And I used to be like, dang, bro, you really using everything that you got from college to the next step to the next step, and always uh, getting promotions and things like that. Right. So that was one. I used to be in the league. But I used to be like, dang, man, you really, you're really, you're really <laughs> out here getting it done. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, just having that type of structure, there has to right. be some type of structure somewhere. But apply it and don't get lost. Don't get your identity lost in sports because it's going to end for everybody at some point. Why, 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 do, you, why, do, you think, um, why do you think that you have the foundation? I mean, like mom, mom, dudes, and pops is real because you, you, you're a grounded guy, man. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you, you humble as hell. Yeah, you're real. You, you a humble guy, bro. We come from small beginnings. Like I said, Leesville, Louisiana. It's it's not much to it. So when we get anywhere, it's all new to us. It's big. Right. Uh, Monroe, Louisiana was a big city to me. Okay. And that because it had that's because it had a mall. Right. Then when I went to the Saints, it was even bigger in DC. But uh I think again, emotional intelligence, understanding that people need this type of person around. Okay. Somebody who's genuine. Right. Uh, of course, my upbringing, I grew up in the church. Um are you were playing the piano? Yeah, I piano actually, the I'm a really good on the drums. Okay. Yeah, I played for the choir, the drums. Go ahead, but, uh, We got to make it in the back, you know. Um, <laughs> and so really just want to be one of one of those people that someone could experience. Okay. okay. Right? You, how, how often do people get to experience a genuine right. person? I don't want anything from you. I'll share mm-hmm. as much as I can without it cutting into my into my life or my time right. where it's inconvenient. Right. Um, but I want people to leave around me like, man, I feel better, either motivated or I, I'm out of a slump from talking to this guy. Right. Uh, or man, he really just gave me this for free, whatever, whatever it is, not, not necessarily information, but whatever it may be. I want your time around me to be an experience mm. of being around someone genuine who doesn't know me from A to Z, but gave me the time of day and looked at me like a person. And not just nobody. Man, that's beautiful. That, 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 that is beautiful, man. I that should, is beautiful. I should tweet that. I know you hey, you're gonna put that out <laughs> there in, in, in the atmosphere, you know what I'm saying? But hey, it'll be on YouTube forever. Yeah. So that's the thing. So Ron, what, what do you got in closing in, in all this right here? Um Always be willing to invest in yourself, learn from other people. And the ultimate goal is passive income. Ooh, the game, yeah. right? So always yeah. be looking at right. what's next, what's going to get me towards that passive income. Right. So, you know what? You, you're, you're a very successful excuse me you're a very successful guy you know what i'm saying you know and um like you just said you know you kept going to school moved up promotion promotion you're doing it big he's looking up to you he's in the nfl he's looking up to his boy you know what i'm saying but at the same time you still had a business mind to want to do something other than the standard thing that you're doing you know what i'm saying like wh- why did you do that Everybody's like, oh, invest in this, this will make you rich. Because I've, I've done that. I've invested in so many different things. What's the formula? Oh, okay. And, you know, just after my best friend ended up finding the blueprint. Right. Um, so at that point, he, he gave me an opportunity. Mm. Um, but, you know, I was in a position where I could take advantage of that opportunity. Okay. And here we are. And it's rolling. Yeah. And y'all rolling. And then it should be seeing y'all all up in boards, just laid up on the wall. They're going to get a new book magazine. You know what I'm saying? Y'all just sitting there just like, hey, what? And what's next? You know what I'm saying? 30, 30, 30. That's, ooh, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Listen, that, that, that's that's good stuff. Hey, Jay, hey, tell everybody where they can reach you at. 
So personal uh, Instagram is J underscore ham, H-A-M-M 86. And that'll be uh, Jerron Ham. If you just write that in, you'll see it. I got a blue check on there. And then um, Pro Hall TV. It'll be Pro Hall underscore TV on Instagram. That's for the truck and Instagram. Also on YouTube, Pro Hall TV. If you write it in, you'll see me on there. Um, and then my other information on there as well. But DM me. I write back all day, every day. That's what I do. So. Holla at me, you could man hard to find him, easy to get to, easy to talk to as well. It is very easy to talk to. Now, listen, if, if he don't text you back right away, trust me, the man is doing 5,000 yeah. things, I, I promise you. You know what I'm saying? But he will get back with big, back to you, and he's not being malicious at all. In it. You know what I'm saying? He's just really a businessman. He got the ex- hey, you know what? Hey, tell us about the Excellence Foundation again. Yeah, so that's Excellence, found- Excellence underscore foundation on Instagram. And uh, we're going to continue. So right now we just talked today because we were like, man, we're held up because of COVID right. on the next event. The next one was supposed to be basketball. But okay. yeah, the gyms we use had some ordinances. But we're going to start just posting content, maybe okay. motivation to keep our name out there in right. the meantime. So that's Excellence Underscore Foundation. Um, and that's just a place where youth, adults, anybody can come get some type of motivation. Right. Uh, we have venture capitalists. We have credit and financial people mm. on the team who have access mm-hmm. to help with different things um mentoring for youth right. um stem and different things like that that science part i'll leave that to chad but <laughs> he got like the robotics team and things right. like that uh but again that's just another group of people a powerful team of of my new network okay who uh are like-minded and in a sense of wanting to give back and right. wanting to help people level up uh, and so it's not just for youth. So for the adults out there, it's excellence underscore foundation. See, that's what it's what you know what I'm saying? People get things that people are just one dimensional and tell you get with them and they will give you access to everything they got going on. You'll be able to connect with other people that's doing great things. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Wick is up there counting business. You know, uh, if you get a chance, check the page out. What's his Instagram? Wick Harper. Let me look at it. Yeah, yeah. what it is. But yeah, that's the CEO of Excellence Foundation. So Wick underscore Harper, W I C K underscore H A R P E R. Definitely check him out. I'm telling you because uh, these these are some great individuals. And I'm telling you, everyone meets great individuals. Um, these are some great individuals. Hey, give me your um, Instagram, Ron, so we can put it out there. Uh, it's Mister underscore X. Yep. Like I'm not on social media much, so just go follow. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah, okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Keep it in the back. That's been real, chill. Been real chill. You know what I'm saying? He the one in high school. With me and our other boy Kevin go do some breakfast. Right. We had to look the wrong to see is it too reckless or are we able to? See, was always gonna keep us grounded. Right. Hey man, I really appreciate you coming down, man. Likewise. Yeah, you know what I'm saying you always told me once I got everything straight. I was telling you, I was like, man, we get everything together. He said, hey, once you get it done. I'm in there, mm-hmm. you know, and, and when I sent you the text, you was like, hey, I'm just waiting for you to tell me you're ready. You know I didn't know what I was going to be out here, you know. So um, it definitely worked out, man. I appreciate you coming down wrong. It's great meeting you again, you know what I'm saying? You know, um, keep doing what you're doing. Like, wow. You know what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, that's a lot of people out here to support what you're doing, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Whether they whether they click or click or smack or whatever they do to these buttons, but mm-hmm. they're watching you, you know what I'm saying? Because like you said, one time you had... You know, you was jumping up and down for a hundred followers or yes, subscribers yes. in a couple of months. Next thing you know, how many you got now? Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. That's great. Yeah. That means you're putting out great content. You know what I'm saying? So keep doing what you're doing, man. And I thank everybody for episode five. This is a wrap for five at um five cast on the fifth of February. I tell you, all these okay. fives are going on. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I appreciate y'all and um. I will be seeing you next week. I'll put out the next episode. I got some wonderful ladies coming in next week. And um, you're going to definitely want to know and hear what they got to say. You know? So we um, appreciate you. And um, you have a good night. Hey, bro. Hit the light. 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 Hit the
it's not closing out. You know what I'm saying? No, no, it's on the light, light switch. Yeah, so this, this is how, uh, you know what I'm saying, closing out. The song run, man. Man, I appreciate that, man, fellas. I'm telling you, man. That was just the. Yeah, that was my first time ever doing something. Was it? Yeah. Man, that's cool stuff. Jay was old superstar over there, but you, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I like that right there, man. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, my first time, I don't know. Yeah, man. Okay. It's low. It's what? Music? Music. 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 Yeah, man. What's the time you going out tomorrow? Uh, I don't know, because the guy who gave me a gift on the same reason I worked, he gave me one. Uh, it's like, uh, some other trucking company. I don't know if they want to do it. I don't know if they want to do it. But the person who asked me was offending me, so I don't know how to do it. 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 Because what y'all look like? Yeah, like what, what type of uh, insurance you got? Really? What, what name is y'all doing? Yeah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. no, this gonna be another thing. They got trucks too. So I think they wanna uh, start trying to do. Uh, I don't know if they want if they have some type of contract or what. That's what the need to be. It's a middleman, so I ain't talking about the nerdy, but he just told me he was going to ask him. I'm not sure about that. Um, when is your thing? That's about it, man. Go watch Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. I would have him this weekend, but you know, <laughs> I'm, uh, I can't use them all. They just came to Dallas like a couple of weeks ago when we stayed in the area. Yeah, to save them for a Yeah. <laughs> save my family. That's it, man. I got all of my truck parking. Um, this whole company's made up like 40 trucks. It took off. It was huh? more than 40 trucks. A lot of trucks. Where? So my truck parking is in Alvarado. It's like a U. And so when you pull in, so it's like a U. You pull in, it's the gate. Right. You got a truck on this side, truck on this side. Whole roll down. You go around the U. And the truck's on the end. But it's only one gate. So we were on this side. So we used to have to go all the way down this rocky, dirty, yeah. or like dusty uh, lot to come back up and park. This one company had all the spots on the side where you can turn to it. They took all the trucks on That's called low Tech. What? So I'm gonna move my spots over there and walk far more. Um, so he's gonna want to probably go in on two trips. Oh, really? And I got three more just for the future. Oh, man. Eight or five or more. I'm not there, though. Oh, okay. So we got another two of them trucks in Los Angeles. Small boat. And the oldest freight line. So pretty much just six dollars off and put the two new trucks on. Right. You going? You think you're going to do, the, uh, do like a catamaran? Yeah. Like, like, like teaching people. Remember how you doing people to hot shot then? Yeah. You think you're going to do that with ATM? Yeah. Man, you could almost start a school, man. I mean, you got you got the space. You got the space out there. Well, we want to do that. One place I went, they did it at the TA. What did I have to do? They did it at the TA. I was. Yeah, the class is in the studio. Oh, he's here. But they, get, they can get you your CDL fast. Uh, so they can get you the CDL fast. What were we talking about there, too? Like a CDL or training? That is crazy. Yeah, so they can get you the CDL fast. Yeah, they can get you the CDL fast. Yeah, they can get you the CDL fast. 
We would get different trucks, though, get 28 foot trailers. Maybe get some day cabs and do that. Yeah, I think that's just smart, man. I mean, there's a couple of different things I'm looking at, man. In fact, uh, they'll put a dump truck in North Carolina mm -hmm. right now. So I got mm -hmm. one there. And um, in this dump truck game, man, it's so, it's so much money. Man. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's crazy, dude. I mean, it's like, the broker out there is 400. Well, it takes 6%. Right? Six percent mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So, and it's like, so the cut is like $430 per load. Mm -hmm. Eight loads a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You do that, man. You do that. You do that. So, after, at this point. So, that is the new Per load. Eight loads. So, you transfer three grand per mm -hmm. day. So, so funny. Yeah. I just think that's what you're doing. Right, and then like like today, like uh, uh, today, um, it uh, it rained and yesterday, right? But it doesn't matter if you, but you got like two days. You know what I'm saying you can make up six thousand in two days, so it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying you know, so and it just what's going on right now, especially in the Raleigh area. There's so many um, much construction going on, and they got for like next four years. But there's so many different places in North Carolina mm -hmm. that a hundred truck dump truck short. Mm -hmm. So it was only smart for me to take one dump trucks out there. You know what I'm saying? It was only smart to do that. Yeah. You know, because it was kind of like, hey, so I had to switch it because it was um, just to be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? Move up from interstate to interstate. Because um, it's a of interstate. Mm -hmm. And I get it. Because it was just going to be, yeah, I didn't think about it. Going for that. Even though the Hoffman's, they were like, dude, you might want to think about doing that. So I said, well, I, Texas mm -hmm. So um so then now it's just kinda of making me look at a bunch of different things and probably the directions I'm gonna go now because it's kinda of like mm -hmm. you know, the box trucks and stuff make it, you know, they make money. The van man, the white one, mm -hmm. dude, I make four hundred dollars, four hundred fifty dollars just in the city. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, per day. You know what I'm saying? Every time I move. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know, four stops in that van oh, for the day. It's four feet. I know. That's why I came out here. Yeah. That's the reason I came out here. So I was just like, but I'm saying I'm not going to stay down. I'm not going to stay in Dallas. I'm not going to stay in You know what I'm saying? It doesn't. And so um, I just saw it was, a, it was a better opportunity. And um, 